Hello everyone, my name is Jesse and welcome to a very exciting episode. Today we're going to be going into an in-depth review of all Pyrus Dragonoid evolutions. That's right, so from Season 1 Drago all the way to Season 4 Drago, we're going to be doing an in-depth review. We're going to talk about all their like unique uh, like talents or, or like unique traits they have in the Bakugan themselves. I'm really excited to get into this guys, so let's go ahead and jump into it. The card we're going to be using to open all these Bakugan is Fire Pit, a Silver Gate card. Features Dragonoid right here, and it's 140 to Pyrus, so obviously very good for Dragonoid. Um, but this is the card we're going to be using, and uh, we're just going to leave it right there uh, to help assist us as we go through all of these Bakugan. So, first up, we have regular old Pyrus Dragonoid. Um, so, if you guys are really unfamiliar with what we're looking at here, um, this is uh, Dan Kuso's Guardian Bakugan. So in the first season through the fourth season, Drago is with Dan um, throughout the entire thing, assisting him in, in his battles and um, all that good stuff. Uh, so he is essentially the main character of Bakugan and the face of Bakugan. This is a B1 Pyrus Dragonoid. Um, so Bakugan later reverted to a B2, which is a slightly larger ball, um, just as a safety thing, and it's easier to play the game with... Um, a little bit of a bigger ball because these were hard to um, get your hands around and all that because they're they're quite tiny um, a little bit bigger than like your biggest marble I would say um, but this is a b1 so Dragonoid's super easy to open um, he's got a horn here that comes out and then feet that have little grooves to stick a finger into and uh, pop the feet open like so um, so this is what Drago looks like currently and then you can pop them open mine gets a little stuck um, but there he goes. So this is Pyrus Dragonoid. We have it. We have him at 480 G's, as you can see here. So quite a strong back gun, um, especially for a B1. And I gotta say, as a classic Bakugan, like he's it. Um, this is like what I remember from my childhood from Bakugan the most. It's just Drago. Um, he's very nostalgic for most of you, probably. I'm sure uh, a good ba like a good go-to Bakugan. Pretty easy to open. Um, I'm really loving the original like color scheme for these um, Drago changes a lot later on but like this darker red on this nice bronze like you can't beat it, it it's amazing um, and I love it so much so he's also easy to close so just like that you pop the feet close the horn and then for most Drago the rule is you shut the wings like this so there's like a little hole and then you just pop the head in and he's good to go back in ball form and uh, ready to roll, literally, but he won't open. <laughs> he gets stuck. <laughs> Up next, we have Delta Dragonoid. So this is the evolution of Drago, and honestly, probably my favorite Bakugan ever. My favorite evolution and just favorite design. I have a lot to say about um, Delta Dragonoid, I, I love it a lot. So, um, first thing I want you to take a notice of is this silver ring here. Um, this is a heavy metal Bakugan, so a unique special attack uh, type of Bakugan. One of the things heavy metal Bakugan can do is knock over other Bakugan. They have a higher chance to critical KO, which means knock a Bakugan off the gate card. Because of this heavy ring, they hit harder and are more easy to roll and control. Um, so, it's just easier to smack Bakugan off the cards and win the gate card. A couple things about uh, Delta here. Number one, the feet are incredible. Um, love that right there. Just like the lava almost look on them. So what's super interesting about Delta here is he's the only Dragonoid to have a horn that manually deploys. So you don't actually have to touch this. He just pops open um, and his horn is right there which is amazing. He's got a little mouth that moves, blue eyes, which is different because he changes from green to blue, and you'll see that kind of flip-flop back and forth a little bit. Um, it's pretty consistent after this, but I think the next Bakugan we're taking a look at has blue eyes as well. Um, but love the look, very like snake-like, got some nice claws here. You can really take a look at those. Um, again, this nice wingspan's pretty cool. Um, and just that heavy metal really accents all the silver in them. Really awesome. Similar to the original Dragonoid, just that same color scheme of that red on bronze. Super nice. Got the pirate symbol on the wing there. 
Really, really awesome Bakugan. Definitely my favorite. Unfortunately, my Delta Dragonoid never came with G-Power. I'm not sure what that's all about, but if it were to be on the Bakugan, it would be either on like the hand right here, on the opposite side right there, um, or underneath the head, kind of where um, the regular Dragos is. And I think it would be 670 Gs, if I'm remembering right uh, from the wiki. Um, but for some reason, mine never never got it. I don't know what the deal is with that. I, it just never had it, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. And to close them, you just shut the legs. Again, lock those wings in and collapse the head. So the next back we got on the list, I actually can't show you because they never made it. Um, so I'm talking about Ultimate Dragonoid. I'll put up a picture on the screen right here of what he looks like. And essentially, Bakugan just never released it. We don't know why, um, but it never became an actual toy. Some people decided to, you know, make 3D printed copies of it, make their own, but it was never actually, you know, officially released. Um, so we never got it. And, um... I don't know, it's kind of unfortunate. I'd like to get my hands on one of these, but uh, you can't <laughs> because they don't exist. But uh, that's Ultimate Dragonoid, so pretty cool. And he would be the third evolution of Drago in this line. Last on the first season of Bakugan, we have Infinity Dragonoid or Perfect Dragonoid, whichever you want to call it. Um, he technically can go by either, but this is after Drago absorbed the Infinity Core in the show. Unfortunately, this Bakugan looks nothing like he does in the show, so I'm going to go and pop him open and uh, kind of give you, just to take a, sit here and take a look for a minute. I'll pull up a picture here just to show you that he looks nothing like uh, what he does in the show at all. Um, so kind of, kind of weird. I don't exactly know why they would do that. Maybe it's to promote heavy metal again. Um, speaking of which, heavy metal right here. Uh, so this is another heavy metal Bakugan. And another unique feature of heavy metal is that they can do unique rolls or spins to like manipulate the game more to really maneuver around your enemy. So for instance, Infinity can do a complete almost like like side spin to get to a, a card behind the enemy or whatever, uh, the opponent. And it's really cool because he can just kind of glide right around. And if you do this like really, really well, I, I wasn't able to get a good like, I wasn't able to actually do this. But if you do it really good, you can kind of make the Bakugan do a full 360. It's kind of interesting. Heavy Metal is good for that. Uh, this right here is Infinity, 680 Gs right there on the wing. So pretty strong, uh, definitely the strongest out of all the Dragonoids I've shown you guys so far. Um, as you can see here, he does have blue eyes, but he has no deployable horn which is kind of sad. Um, this one is just very different. I like it because it's different, but it's so different from all Dragos that it kind of just, it kind of looks like its own separate Bakugan and not actually a Dragonoid. Um, but like most Dragos, he's got some like wings. Uh, not sure if these are meant to be feet right here or wings themselves, but uh, they do look cool spread out like this. So that's pretty awesome. To close them, it's very simple. First off, you shut the legs right like that. Then you close these wings, sometimes these like to re-pop out, but you close like the hands and then the, the head tucks in and then you seal it with the wings right there. Pretty easy. Just a quick intermission guys, I do want to let you know I do buy and sell Bakugan. You can check out both my eBay and Mercari, whichever you prefer, in the description below. You can also follow my Instagram and if you need anything business related, you can check out my email down below, joystickjesse99 at gmail.com. Up next on the list is Neo Dragonoid. So this is a translucent Neo Dragonoid, part of my collection where I collected all the season two main characters as translucent if it was available. Um, so this is the translucent version. Obviously there are variations to this. There is the opaque version, which is just solid red. There's the vortex version that spins. And then they also have a hex version, which is a uh, 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 one, one variation of Drago that came from the show when uh, Spectre used some uh, kind of cracked ability cards and turned him into like an evil dragonoid or whatever. Um, so there's a different color scheme there, but they're all the same. This is the evolution. Those are um, variations. You've also got Neo Dragonoid from the uh, Maxish Dragonoid set. Again, all Neo Dragonoid, just variations. So uh, this is what Neo looks like. He's honestly the most like 
recognizable dragonoid so his feet pop here and then you've got these horns that uh, deploy but these back ones are kind of locked until you've popped him all the way open um, but you pop him down like that there he is pull out his horns which are a nice bright yellow so this is the big change that um bakugan had in the se in the second season is things got brighter for some reason um maybe it's just to help market it not a hundred percent sure but we have neo here and um honestly pretty sick gotta say uh so this is right off the second season so he's got much more identifiable features now obviously the horn his eyes have gone back to green right there hands right there which look a bit more uh more hand-like than claws at this point he is 575 G's, if you can see that right there. Uh, so significantly weaker than Infinity and Delta, um, but stronger than the original. Not sure um, if if that's like on purpose or just a toy thing, but you'd think as Drago evolved he'd get stronger, but that's not really the case. Um, I guess it also depends on where you bought him from and all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, really a big fan of the translucent, really nice shine. Um, Again, you've got this nice bronze color, which I really am a fan of. Um, but now you have that coupled with uh, these yellow horns, which is honestly I'm okay with. It's a nice, it's a nice uh, change and all that. Um, again, pirate symbol still on the wing, so we've got some consistency there, which is really nice. Um, but other than that, Neo is uh, not got too much uh, too much going for him unless you've got the Vortex version, which just spins. But other than that, Neo is very easy to close. Of course, you shut the feet first. Then you go ahead and collapse the horns down. You can shut these two side wings right here. So there's two, and then they just kind of close in. Next up, you kind of have to shut the wings and the head around the same time just to get them to lock. Um, there you go. So sometimes that can be a little tricky, but other than that, he's a very easy close. Next up on the list is Cross Dragonoid, the evolution of Neo Dragonoid. This one is, of course, Translucent, a part of my Season 2 Translucent uh, collection set. Um, this is a Japanese exclusive Bakugan. You cannot, you couldn't get it in the U.S. Um, what makes this one even harder to get is it was Japanese exclusive, and it was exclusive to the Defenders of the Core DS edition from 2010. So this came with the game. When you bought it, it was in a little box uh, similar to Naga. Um, in the DS version of the first Bakugan Battle Brawlers game, uh, but this was exclusive to only Japan, so he's unique in a ton of ways. If you can tell, the plastic on this translucent is a bit more clear, and it's kind of like cleaner. Um, you see this a lot with Japanese Bakugan that are translucent in general. I guess there's a higher quality plastic they used over there, um, but overall, really, 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 really nice. So Cross is really easy to open, but you do have to kind of open him um, after he's been deployed so you can pop out uh, this horn but not these other two so very similar to neo still um, the feet will not pop until you've dropped him but he does spin so um, this is vortex so this is a unique feature to drago and honestly it's really cool so i'm gonna drop him and of course he will spin because he's vortex so he doesn't really spin all that much but uh you can like wind him i guess and he does like move and stuff like that so that's kind of cool but it is it does get a little annoying because sometimes like you want him to sit straight and he doesn't quite do that um but there are his feet he's got a little tail back here that helps balance him uh, so that kind of pops out and uh yeah like i said he he does spin quite a bit so if you want to get him like perfectly straight you gotta like mess with him um but he is 580 g's so if you look at my neo he's only 5g stronger which is a bit disappointing especially because you get such an epic upgrade um but this is cross super interesting bakugan just for the spinning and all that as you can see again the pyrus symbol is on the wing this one's a little lopsided though it's kind of like pointing towards the right rather than sticking straight up which is interesting um but still on the wing so we've definitely got some crazy consistency there um aside from infinity who had his on the head um, but otherwise, they're on the wings. So you can just tell Infinity was kind of a fluke to begin with. But yeah, Cross Drago, again, 
keeping that bronze look um, on top of the red as pirates do and with all season two uh, the yellow horns which are super nice um, yellow hands as well which is super cool um, but yeah super hard bakugan to find if you do happen to get one uh, consider yourself very lucky because they are very sought after cross is a bit more complicated to close i always start with the feet and then I go in and close the horns as I do all my dragos. And then I close these bottom wings, which you can hear kind of zip. Um, and then you have to line up the head, of course, with everything else. And then this little piece will catch on the back of the head, which sometimes doesn't. Um, I think it's very specific, but it will go in as long as it catches the head. There you go, like so. Up next is Helix, which is definitely not my number one on this list. Um, Helix is 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 just all right. Um, this started. He's kind of in the second season, kind of in the third season. Gundalian Invaders. It's a bit wishy washy because um, he's in both. But I'm gonna put him in season two. Um, right here, you can see he's got his DNA code from the uh, like the the game they had online before it went down. Um, you can see now they've lost that bronze and put in more yellow. So yellow seems to have won out, and then they changed some of that yellowing to an orange detailing. So Helix is pretty easy to open like all other Dragonoid. Pop the horn, then the feet, like so, and then just plop him on the card, and he'll spring open. And uh, the one thing about Helix, which is interesting, is these hands. They're kind of like free hanging, which make him harder to close. Um, but yeah, overall, pretty cool. Strong Bakugan, 720 Gs. Let's see if I can show that. Uh, right there, 720. So significantly stronger than Cross. Um, probably because Cross is Japanese exclusive and for some reason the Japanese Bakugan are much lower in G power not sure why that is um, but the unique feature with Helix is that these wings pop out like this and you can actually add battle gear so this is like the first Dragonoid to have battle gear and I do happen to have his exclusive battle gear so this is a translucent jet core it does light up uh, one of the lights is a bit broken as you'll see but it just has some holes right here and it lines up and it will pop open and yeah you see one light glows but sometimes the other one will glow too it, it's very broken but um, of course this will have G power I believe it's underneath it somewhere yep so 120 G's on the battle gear and that will just add to helixes during a game so he just gets stronger with all of this battle gear um, so really cool that he can like pop that up and just kind of like you know, add extra power to himself. I think it's super awesome. And definitely where I think Bakugan should have stopped adding all these extra things to them because it's cool to have battle gear, but it, it starts to get out of control, and I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but pretty cool for Helix, and of course, all this just collapsed, collapses in on itself. So Jet Core, you kind of just shut. Um, fairly easy. Just lock it all together. And then... Helix, of course, close the feet and the horns, make them smaller, and then make sure you pop up his wings so they do lock back in. Arms have to be kind of backwards. This is where it gets confusing because they'll want to flop forward, but you won't want to let them. And then, of course, make sure you get the wings to push up, which they also don't ever want to do, but <laughs> you'll get it eventually. They got to really spring forward and lock and then boom closed so kind of difficult and not the easiest in the world he also has this like lip right here which makes it really hard to roll him which i'm not a fan of up next we have lumino dragonoid which is the evolution of helix dragonoid and these guys are super similar um there's more yellow i guess in lumino um, but the designs are almost identical, and you'll see what I mean here in a second when I open him. The only difference is he has these chrome horns and feet that make him different. Um, but other than that, they are like almost the same Bakugan. Like, it's kind of crazy. Um, so I'll go ahead and pop him open. Mine does like to kind of like open on its own here, so go ahead and get him open while he's at it. <laughs> Alright, get a wing over here. 
And I mean, yeah, that's Lumino. He looks hyper similar to Helix. Uh, same wings, similar horns, similar feet. The only difference now is the hands actually you can adjust instead of them just wiggling. You can kind of move them around, which is cool. Um, the G power is 900 G's, which you can kind of see right there. So 900 G's, which is really strong for a Dragonoid. But just like Helix, his wings do collapse back and you can put battle gear on there. Um, his battle gear in the show is the Explosix gear. However, I do not have that, um, but I can show you again just with the jet core that it pops open and will stick on the back of him. So it's the same exact concept still. Yeah, the only difference in Lumino is he has these wings here. His horns are a bit different, so are his uh, feet and hands, but like this is very similar um, in layout, I guess. So I don't know. He feels kind of kind of like a, a wash up for me after having helix um, but he is very easy to close so of course you shut the feet up and the horns so make sure those are closed make sure these wings on the, the tiny wings on the side are closed and then you can kind of start popping up his wings and his uh his tail right here so these are these this is broken i think right here so this one might fight me the whole time um but then you can just sort of start closing his uh, head along with the wings. You just got to make sure you get those hands in the right position or else they will battle you the whole time you're trying to close them. But they all shut together and then you can lock everything in place. Um, mine just has a hard time closing, similar to my Helix. So maybe there is a design flaw there um, with everything. But uh, again, the pirate symbols on the wing. So super interesting how consistent they have been so far. <laughs> So up next is Blitz Dragonoid, which looks nothing like uh, he does in the show, and I'll show you here in a second, but um, let's take a look at him first, just look at the colors. So again, you've got, uh, you've gone from this bronze color from the first season and the second season to this yellow, uh, which I'm not, I'm not against, but I do think I prefer that shiny bronze. Um, we get the horns out, these actually pop out all separately, and then the feet come out. So we can go ahead and pop him open just like that um, and I'm gonna go ahead and put a picture here while I talk about him so yeah Blitz looks nothing like he does in the show in fact Blitz looks more like Battleix in the sh in like the toy form so I'll put up Battleix right now which comes with the Dragonoid Colossus which is similar to Maxis Drago um, he looks more like that than Blitz actually does. Blitz is like a very different toy. I'm not 100% sure why they would even do that when they could have just released Battleix and called it Blitz, um, but they didn't. This is the official name um, of the, this is the official toy for Blitz Dragonoid, um, which he's not the worst in the world. I think a lot of people don't like him because he doesn't look similar, but like he's cool in his own right. He's got more of like a hooked face, so he's got more of like a beak um, and all that good stuff. He does bend forward so he can fit battle gear uh, like so. And his battle gear for this is Axter. It's the Axter gear, which I don't have. But like any battle gear, it just clips on like so um, to fight. Which is kind of weird because he just kind of like lays his face in the ground. Um, you gotta like pop him back. <laughs> He's all kinds of a mess. But um, so yeah, the unique feature about Blitz is that he only has 50 G's. Yeah, look at that. See that? See it's on the wing right there, let's see if I can show you. Way in the back, yeah. He's just got 50 G's, which is like, what? No, I'm kidding, he, he doesn't actually have 50 G's. Um, so on the back here, he's got a button that you can press. So you click that down, and his, let's see if I can get it just right. Uh, his hands pop out. So just like that. Um, and he actually has 700 G's. So right there, you can see it. It's a little bit hard in this lighting, um, but I can zoom in for you. 700 G's right there, um, perfect. It's much weaker than Helix that we just looked at or even like Lumino who had 900. Um, so interesting that they'd go weaker on us, but um, yeah, this is Blitz and um, overall like pretty cool, um, but also not my favorite. <laughs> Yeah, he's easy to close as well, so you just shut the feet, 
shut the horns. Make sure his arms lock back in like so. So I'll click him back in. And then he kind of just like goes to sleep. You can tuck his little nose in the little hole right there and then lock him up. Interesting enough, this Bakugan has a symbol on the front. So it seems like we're getting a trend of where all Dragos have theirs on their wings except the ones that are not show accurate. So I don't know, pretty interesting there. Up next, we have Titanium Dragonoid, which is by far a fan favorite. Um, he's got a super long horn here, and uh, these horns that come up individually, as well as these nice feet. Um, you can see the die cast chrome here. Mine is just plastic, it's not real metal. Um, some, some of the die cast are actually metal, uh, but this one is not. He's also got a really long tail. Um, he's also, I think, the tallest Dragonoid. I'm not 100% sure on that, but from my own like video and like checking him out and stuff, he's He's significantly taller. So let's go ahead and pop him open. Yep. So he's quite, quite tall. Um, again, we still have these hands. And fortunately, now they don't punch out. They just kind of sit there and flop. Um, he's got a pretty unique um, wing system here. Let's check the wings for the symbol. Where's the symbol? On the back of the head. <laughs> so not quite on the wing, but I guess that's the only place they could put it. Um, he has... Looks like 910 G's. Mine's a little scraped off, so it's kind of hard to see there, but it's looking like 910. Um, yep, 910, and of course, more green eyes there, so if we're keeping track and consistency, we're looking pretty good. Really like the uh, the, the like wideness of him. The wings spread out is still very consistent with Drago and all that good stuff. Now, he's got a lot of different pegs. I actually think he has the most pegs of any Bakugan. Um, for Baku Nano, which is like the upgrade from what was Battle Gear. Um, so I don't have any any Baku Nano, so unfortunately I cannot really do a good display, but he's got one, two, three, four, and five. So five different pegs um, for Battle Gear. And his Battle Gear in the show was the Sonic Cannon, um, and he had Mobile Assaults, which were Zumpha and Raptilier. And then he also had like Mechotan, which we're not going to really get into. Um, but what's unique about Titanium is that he could mutate. So he had a mutant form, which was Mercury Dragonoid, which is right here. So we're going to leave Titanium off in the background. And so for certain parts of the show, um, they could mutate. So they would mutate with other Bakugan to get stronger. And I happen to have uh, Pyrus Mercury Dragonoid here, so I can really show it. Um, so <laughs> he's already trying to open. I guess he's excited. But um, yeah, so... You can pop him open. I guess he really doesn't want to. Um, but yeah, wings and feet out. Okay, so yeah, pretty unique here, I guess. Um, so it's really weird in the show. They kind of just have him as titanium, and then suddenly he'll just change <laughs> into mercury. Um, but if you want to take a look and compare G-Power, so 910 to 970, he does get stronger. Um, but... You know, in the show, he combines with um, Helios and Tailene to get stronger. Um, I do have a video showcasing Mercury. I'll put a, uh, like an icon up in the corner there right here. Let's see right here. So you can you can click that if you're interested just to see Mercury and how he works with mutant um, Helios and all that because I have plenty of videos on that um, kind of showcasing it because mutants, actually, you have a little button in the back that you press and they detach so you can swap them. Um, so they swap parts, they swap attributes. Notice on the wing, uh-huh, we got something going on. Um, but yeah, so Mercury is easy to close. Just make sure you get his feet up. Um, his wings are similar to Helix and Lumina where you got to, like, push them down. Uh, so make sure you do that. Then, of course, wings go down, then head to lock it in place, and then wings, and uh, he's ready to go. So, yeah, that's pretty unique. Um, just another way, I guess, they created more Bakugan and stuff. Um, but he is, Mercury is still essentially Titanium, except just mutated with another Bakugan. So Titanium closes just the same as pretty much every Drago. Um, lock the feet, close the horns, flip the tail up, and then you kind of got to wiggle this, but his, his head will go down, and then you can close both the wings. So yeah. Um, another thing I don't like too much about these Mechanium Surge Bakugan is like this weird lip. Like I know it's there to... Like, I guess, help balance it and stuff. But rolling this Bakugan is terrible. Like, it kind of goes everywhere and it doesn't really quite work. I don't know. Not my favorite. Well, 
Lastly, we have Fusion Dragonoid, which is the final evolution of Drago for the Legacy series. Um, this is a Sky Raider Bakugan, and um, very unique, very different. A lot of people are not fans of this Dragonoid because he looks so different from the other ones. I, however, am actually a fan of it. Um, so the Sky Raiders jump, and you can use that to your advantage. I don't think you're allowed to use them in official Bakugan battles, but if you're battling your friends and stuff, it's super cool because you can, like, have them leap over Bakugan and land on another card. It's a great way to avoid a battle or outsmart your opponent. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and place him down here. You'll get to see another jump, um, but he does kind of spring forward. So, yeah, um, always kind of scared he's going to break or something like that. But uh, he's pretty strong, pretty durable. And it does get the job done. Um, so, as you can see here, Pyrus symbol on the wing. Very, very nice. Um, he's also got different G powers. You can put different ones on here just depending on what, like, Bakugan you have that have these. So, like, I know Commandix, which is a variation of this, um, has, like, different ones than maybe the Baku Camo version of this has. This is the, like, official one. This is, like, the anime accurate one. Um, so, you got 30 Gs here and 30 Gs here on the wings. And then on the side here, you have uh, 890. Um, so 890 plus 60, um, I believe, makes the strongest Dragonoid we have out of all these, if I'm doing my math correctly. Um, and uh, yeah, super cool. Um, I'm really digging like the flare out on him. So he's got such tall wings and all that good stuff. And he's also got a peg right here, um, which uh, helps him combine with Reptac to create an Arrow Blitz. Um, so he can just uh, kind of combine and become stronger, similar to all the different battle gear and Baku Nano and all that stuff. Of course, he's got a couple different variations that came with a couple different like toy lines and all that good stuff. But I am very happy with this Bakugan. I think he's unique. I think it really ended the Drago line, at least in a toy sense, very well. Because it was like, this is like the height of coolest toy ever. Um, I am not very familiar with the end of the show, unfortunately, so I don't know how that ended. I can see why people are pretty disappointed, like, if he ended looking like this, because it's, it's sort of like, man, what, that doesn't really look like Drago, like, it doesn't even look like a dragon. Like, if you compare, like, Fusion to, like, Delta, you're gonna be like, what? Like, Delta's so much cooler, he looks like an actual dragon compared to... Fusion. But it is what it is. Um, he's definitely one of my favorites. I don't think he quite necessarily beats Delta and Cross Dragonoid, but to me he's better than Titanium, so um, I'm pretty happy with him. And to close him, all you got to do is push these feet up. They close together. They're also like spring-loaded, so be careful. Um, you shut the horns here, and then you kind of got to move the head back. It will lock into place. You got to fit it with it some, and then close the hands in, and then of course just Lock the wings, and there he goes. All right, guys, and that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, feel free to leave a like, drop a comment, and, of course, subscribe for more awesome content. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Hello, everyone. My name is Jesse, and welcome back to another Bakugan review. Today, we're going to be taking a look at all of Marucho's Guardian Bakugan. So we're going to be going from Season 1 all the way to Season 4 and doing an in-depth showcase and, like, review of each of the characters. Before we get started guys, I do wanna let you know I do buy and sell Bakugan. If you are interested in anything I am selling, you can check it out in my eBay or Mercari. The links will be down below in the description. Also, if you have any business inquiries with me, feel free to contact me via Instagram or use the email right on screen. For today's video, we're gonna be using the gate card Rainbow to open today's Bakugan. So we've got 200 on Aquas, features Preyus here, very fitting. It says each Bakugan gets 50 plus G power for each different attribute of Bakugan that their owner is using in the game. So pretty good if you are using, you know, like maybe Aquas, Heos, and Subterra in your deck. So this card is very useful for that. Uh, I really just picked it because it features Preyus and it looks really cool right there. <laughs> And as we're talking about Preyus, he is the first on our list of Bakugan. So right here, I have an Aquas B1 Open Core Preyus. Um, I got him a very long time ago for $25 online. It was it was quite the deal. Um, yeah, he's, he's an old one. Uh, you can even tell by the screws. Like, there's the triangle screws, but they're so, like, old looking. 
Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and pop Prius open. I'm going to roll him, actually. Yeah. Looks like we got him on Subterra there. Uh, let's see. Gonna pop his feet open. And yeah, this is B1 Prius. And he's got this little wheel that you can use to change the attribute. So we've got Aquas, uh, Subterra, and then let's see if I can get Darkus. There's Darkus. So yeah, he can be any of those. And mine only has 250 Gs, which is incredibly weak. Um, not the weakest. I think the weakest Bakugan you can actually get is like 150 Gs, but for a main character Bakugan, <laughs> he's pretty weak. Um, I'm going to go ahead and kind of leave some um, <clears throat> pictures going up here while I talk about Preyus. So um, I really am a fan of this season's color scheme. I think this kind of blue bluish teal color on this dark blue is very nice and then of course you got Preus's signature purple here which is just a nice accent color it really like it really looks like Preus as a ball form which i'm you know pretty happy with and like i said this is marucho's first guardian bakugan back in season one uh where you know all the talking bakugan sort of start showing up um Preus is a fan favorite just because of his uh, personality and yeah I can see why he's pretty cool he's got this really unique attribute changing wheel which is really his whole gimmick um, and useful for brawls but yeah and to close Preus up all we do is shut the feet so manual right there and then his hands go in like so and then we just lock him together and yeah that's Preus Up next, we have Preus's evolution, and I'm going to say that with air quotes because it's not really an evolution. It's kind of just a new Bakugan. So what ends up happening is Preus, this is spoilers, by the way, if you haven't seen the first season. But at this point, I don't know why you're on this channel if you haven't seen the first season. So spoiler alert. But uh, after Preus defeats Frosh, who is one of the legendary warrior Bakugan, he like chokes up slash gives birth to this Bakugan. And this is considered Preus 2, or Angelo and Diablo. Um, and this, like Preus, is a very unique Bakugan. Um, so it has two sides. So you can open one side and get Diablo, or open the other side and get Angelo. So we're going to do a roll here and just see which one we get. Let's see. Yeah, all right. So we got Angelo here, and uh, he's at 550 Gs. But if we close this and flip it and do it, we get Diablo, which is like really 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 cool i think this gimmick in bakugan is very underrated but here we have diablo at 660 g so diablo is actually the stronger side and what's unique about this is in battle you can roll it and it'll be totally random which is like very on brand for preis um so you kind of never know what you're going to get it's always a gamble but that's the exciting part of it because then you can manipulate like your ability cards and gate cards for it which i really like um, we're going to go ahead and open up both sides while I kind of talk about the color scheme and stuff. So, um, I'm going to set him here. I'm going to throw up some pictures. So, first off, right off the bat, I think you can notice that the color scheme's a bit different. Uh, in the show, they're a much lighter blue. Um, and that's, that's okay with me. I think that they're trying to stick with the on-brand kind of, you know, aquas color. Uh, I've seen some really nice custom paints of, of the aquas Diablo and... Uh, Angelo. Yeah, as far as I know, this is the, the you know, legit one. Um, there's been some, like, random off-brand color ones I'm not too sure about, but uh, this is the one I'm sticking with as evidence. So, uh, yeah, uh, in terms of Angelo, I think the white on yellow is, you know, very angelic, and so it matches. And then likewise for Diablo here, um, the red with the horns and, like, the red face is very on-brand as well. Uh, this background is just super cool, and there's actually a lot of texture to it uh, that is kind of like going unnoticed because of the color of the background, which I guess is a loss. Um, but uh, yeah, so like in terms of uh, Preus, it's really nice because technically they can both battle together, you know, because they're they're not and he's not really an evolution; he's more like an addition to Preus in the show. It's really weird, and a lot of Marucho's Bakugan have like these crazy gimmicks like that, um, where they kind of just battle together. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so to close Angel and Diablo, it's really easy. So you want to close like either side. You get the arms first. So for Diablo, you just shut both of these, 
And then for Angelo, you just shut both of those, and then Angelo's top closes, and then Diablo's top closes, and they all click together. And uh, yeah, that is Aquas Preus 2. Up next on our list is Aquas Elfin from Season 2, New Vistroia, one of probably my favorite Bakugan ever made. Um, so, essentially, Marucho finds Elfin in the woods, and they battle together and kind of just hit it off. Um, this is a translucent one, part of my New Vistroia set, where I tried to collect every New Vistroia Bakugan as either translucent or as most like anime accurate as I could possibly get. You know, I wasn't I wasn't super picky on it, but uh, I tried to get them all translucent if they were available. And so this is the translucent elfin. She's really cool. I like her voice. It does change in the show, um, and so that was kind of off putting. But I do like the second voice they put better. It sounded less like a grandma and more like like what elfin should sound like. And so Elfin here has two manual parts, and they just pop open like that. And she's got 650 Gs right there. It's actually kind of hard to tell because it's been scuffed, and it looks like a 5. But the, the 6 actually has a curl to it, and I can compare it to that 5. So it's 650, which is pretty strong for Elfin. Um, and the cool thing about Elfin is she also has an attribute wheel, very similar to Preus. It's Subterra, Darkus, and Aquas. But hers, instead of having a little pin, you actually have to push her like hat up. And so that's what moves it and decides. I don't think it's quite as good as Preus's. I think this one's a bit lacking, but it does do the job, I guess. Uh, we're going to get on Aquas because she's an Aquas Bakugan. Uh, mine's magnet is a little bit off. It doesn't roll very well, but I'm going to leave it up as I talk about her. I'm probably going to mention this again with Minx Elfin, but my favorite thing about Elfin is how she's like loosely based off of Sailor Moon. Uh, there's some very nice like similarities there, which I love. I don't particularly know much about Sailor Moon other than its aesthetic, and I really like its aesthetic, and just seeing Elfin in like, you know, kind of based off that is kind of exciting, just because it fits her so well. Yeah, I just think in the show, she, like Preus, had a very kind of like light attitude, and you know, her contrast with Preus had a little romance thing going on. It was really nice. Yeah, I don't think the ball form really does her too much justice. It loses a lot of the paint, especially like in the face and all that, as you saw from the images. But um, yeah, just as like a little frog fairy, she's pretty cool. And so to close her up, all you do is shut the feet, and then close her hands, and then her head actually comes down like this. There's also this really cute moment in the show. I'll try and find uh, a video of it, but like she's like this, but her little like head thing falls over her actually, and it gets stuck, and she's like hopping around, and so it gets it gets stuck like that, and it's it's really cute, and it's kind of hard to recreate on this magnet, but it's it's wanting to. It's actually staying for the most part. So yeah, but it's a really cute moment, and it's you know something that made me smile. Um, but yeah, that is Aquas Elfin. Next up is Elfin's Evolution Minx Elfin. This is specifically the anime accurate colors or anime special colors. It's uh, Japanese, so here you have the Magnet Guard right there. Um, this is considered a Baku Tech on the list. I think a lot of like special Bakugan are considered ba Baku Tech, not in the sense that we know, like we think Baku Tech is a separate line, but for some reason they categorize this as Baku Tech. Um, so that's been an interesting thing um, that I've been hearing in my comments a long time is I'll mention this is Bagu Tech and people are like, oh no, it's not. But for some reason, Bagu Tech's only considered like special ability or special Bakugan in some sense. It's not as specific as you think. And this one is considered Bagu Tech just like Helios Mark II and all that. Um, and yeah, this one is the special anime colors. You can see them go online for like, usually it's like 90 to 120. Um, so it's not too, too bad. This elephant actually has a lot of manual parts. So we're going to go ahead and pop her open. So right there. And then so we see we've got the feet there. And then, of course, we've got ooh, this hand stuck. Oh, no. There we go. And then the uh, little, like, hair curls actually pop out. And so I'm going to go ahead and, again, throw up some photos while I talk about her. Um, but you can see here Elfin has 540 Gs, so much weaker than my uh, just regular old Elfin. I think it's got to do with the fact it's Japanese, and the Japanese tended to have uh, weaker G power levels. Um, but, yeah, as you can see here, you know, we've totally got a completely new color palette. Uh, we've still got the nice frog face, which is an improvement from the original Elfin. 
Um, it, it actually makes more sense now. Like, she looks like her character in the show. You know, like, you can look at a picture of, of Elfin and say, like, yeah, the ball form of this does represent what she actually looks like. And I'll pull up a picture again to show, like, the difference between this, the special colors, and the regular colors. Most of it's honestly just color palette. Uh, instead of, like, a bright yellow, we've got gold instead, and we lose some features in the face. Uh, but otherwise, it's pretty much the same. Um, I just, you know, got this one because I wanted as anime accurate as possible. And, uh, yeah, it, it really worked. Uh, it paid off. I think I got it. I remember buying this. I got it with my translucent cross dragonoid i think i think i paid 30 dollars for this but there was also 30 dollars shipping so i got a deal on it plus i got it with the cross dragonoid i can't remember how much i actually ended up spending but it wasn't too much just for this bakugan and uh yeah elfin this one specifically is one of my favorite i just think elfin as a character was super cute and um yeah i wish there was a little bit more going on here um it just feels like there's a lot of extra space here that could be used for something. But, I mean, the ball form works, and it does its job. And so, of course, in the show, one of the cuter moments was, like, Preus and Elfin's relationship. You know, they kind of had, like, a little romance thing going on. And so you'd often see them together. There's, like, a whole moment uh, in New Vistroia where, like, she runs to, like, a swing and Preus comes find her and stuff. It's super cute. Um, highly recommend New Vistroia if you're interested in Elfin and her aesthetic and all that. Uh, really cool character and like Preyas she can also um, She has like an attribute change the the wheel itself is not on her. It's just in the show um, It doesn't show on minx elfin like it does for the regular elfin But uh, yeah, she can also change her attribute and all that good stuff. I believe at this point she can change to ventus Yeah, so I just checked and, and from this point on she can uh, change from aquas to darkest and to ventus So a little bit of a change there instead of being subterra, which is really cool And so to close elfin we put her feet in and then she's got these little uh, pieces of hair that we need to rotate back into the body. And so those go in. And then the next part's a bit complicated and it does take some tries. But you want to get her like arms down. Like so. And then her head all together. And it should just click in like that. And that is Aquas Minx Elfin. Now we are moving on to Season 3 with Aquamos, and honestly, Aquamos is probably my least favorite character of Marucho's Guardian Bakugan. I just, the cool is the rule dude thing, constantly hammering on in your ear is not that great, and uh, I don't know, I'm not a fan of his ball for him either. Um, so, to open Aquamos here, we've got some feet, and what I do like about Season 3 is they definitely improve, like, a lot of Bakugan mechanics at this point. Things start getting more complicated. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and open Aquamos here, so we've, he's got these cool big fin things. And, there we go, that's Aquamos. And, as you can see here, he's got, like, some cool goggles on and all that. Um, his ball form does do him justice. Like, I think at this point, Bakugan really start looking like they're like ball form like their toy forms you can really see all that here and um Akumos has 560 g's right there and of course he has battle gear as you saw from the little teaser thing uh so that will go here the one thing i've mentioned this before all these background look flat without their battle gear but uh yeah so here is Akumos. i'll go ahead and throw up some pictures so you can take a look uh i do like they're kind of bringing back this uh like light blue pale like teal maybe um, color scheme into the mix, which is really nice. A uh, little red on there is also a nice addition. The color scheme itself is great. Uh, just Aquamos as a character was not that great. And so to deploy his battle gear, throw his feet down like so. And then here is his battle gear, Gigarth. And it really makes him look like a giant truck when I put it on, or like he's driving a car, but it's actually supposed to resemble claws. And it's just, it's probably the biggest battle gear, and it's it's just a lot and let's see if I can even yeah so there we go and yeah it, it just it's it's a tough one and so it kind of wraps around his hands right here it's supposed to resemble claws and uh, yeah again it's so big it doesn't actually fit on the whole video I have to zoom out that's how large he is but it has 180 G's right there and I mean, overall, is is good battle gear. This is also the gold one, which is what it was like in the show. And I'll just throw up some images 
so you can see super fast the similarities and there are a bunch i mean it's pretty much a one-to-one -to, -one to the show except maybe some color differences and that's at this point is normal um but yeah that's aquamos and so the battle gear does help it's just so big um it, it's huge battle gear and the one thing i don't like is it's very hard to close so from my experience you shut this first and then that locks in and then you flip in the the like claw pieces and then you shut these so those will click in together and that locks the battle gear however aquimos himself is not fun so i literally struggled with this for like a good five minutes trying to get him ready for the video and so this right here is the tough part. So this, there's a piece right here that's supposed to lock everything into place. And man, does it just not work. Like, Aquamos is the most painful character to get back into ball form. And you guys can sit there in the comments and be like, Oh, Jesse, you're doing it wrong. You've got to do this, 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 and this. It doesn't matter. He's just complicated. Like, I could be doing it totally wrong, but like, most Bakugan come together regardless. This guy just doesn't want to come together. So, I have been practicing for a good five minutes trying to get him ready for the video let's see if i can do it again but this time like first or second try so we've got him he's got to go down right and you've got to make sure his head and his chest so his chest goes down here right you can't see that's blurry and so his head's got to go in right and so then his hands have to go in and like they go in and you kind of get them together. And the hardest part is fighting for your life right here on this back piece. So I just kind of, you know, I go in. And one piece goes in, the other one does not. And so then we're stuck with, with this. So let's not first try. Let's try it this way. So head goes down. Get in there! Come on! Ah. Ah, okay. Ah, I got him. It's just, it's just a bunch of pressing that's all you can do um, but that is aquas aquimos up next is aquas tristar which is marucho's first guardian bakugan in mectanium surge arc one so we have uh, a very similar gimmick here to preus with the wheel here and elfin but except this time it's a g power wheel which is actually not showcased at all in the show. This is just a gimmick that strictly belongs to the toy here. Um, but as you can see, we've got the Mectanium Surge colors, so uh, silver on blue. And uh, this is not die cast in any way, which is unfortunate because Mectanium Surge is really cool because of the die cast. But we've just got straight plastic here, very similar to Aquimos. He's got little legs here that open up and they, they kind of flare out. And uh, yeah, so we can go ahead and pop him open really quick like this to see his G Power Wheel spin. See if I can get a good shot of it. Yeah, you can definitely see that spin. He looks kind of like a rabbit, but of course in the show he's more um, alien. I don't really know what he resembles. Um, I can't really tell you. But uh, yeah, the the face is right here. It kind of flaps out. It's really interesting. Um, but, you know, in terms of color scheme, very similar. Just uh, instead he's got some light blue, which we're now missing, that was in... Uh, season 1 and Season 3, that light blue on him. And yeah, other than that, Tristar is um, a relatively good Bakugan in the show. I love the voice actor for the English dub, and I just liked his personality. It was really, really good, and a lot of his character is well done. You know, always pushing Marucho, um, always, like, kind of on top of things, honestly, which is something Marucho needed in a partner Bakugan. Uh, and then, of course, we've got his Baku Nano here, which is Cross Striker. Um, this goes onto his back right here, including in the show. Um, the only thing that's not the same is this piece doesn't come out, but everything else does. And so I'll show you how that works. So uh, it goes onto his back right here, and then there's a button. And so we're going to press this button, and it pops out his uh, little, like, it's basically a bow. In the show, I'll, I'll pull up a picture. It goes on his back like this in the show. And then the nano itself is actually a bow, and it, you know, as, as you can see in the pictures, it um, it just basically shoots water arrows, which is really awesome. Um, and 
I don't know. The Baku Nano are cool. I don't think they're the most amazing things in the world. They are in some ways an improvement from Battle Gear in the sense that you don't need them to make the Bakugan look like a Bakugan. They're just an additional piece that can be used in battle. Um, whereas the Battle Gear, I feel like, made the Bakugan look cooler. Baku Nano is totally different. Um, and yeah, it was useful in the show and all that good stuff, but um, I don't know. It's it's. I wish that this piece would pop out as well like it does in the show, but it doesn't. And so there's not too much to it. And then again, to close it, it's just, it's literally bad. Like, that's how easy it is. So he has a bunch of different Gs. So 540 is one, 580, 640, 460, 500, 520, and then, and then 540 again. So there's a lot of different options there, which is nice. Uh, just because a lot of Marucha's Bakugan are like Chance Bakugan and all that good stuff. So to close Aquamos, of course, we close his feet. And then we've got to tuck his hands in like so. And then the hardest part is you, I hold these together and then his, make sure you don't get his like little like face stuck. And then you've got to close that. And then I close the ears. And that is Aqua's Tristar. Last on our list of Guardian Bakugan is Aquas Radizen from Mectanium Surge Arc 2. Easily the hardest and most rare of Marucho's Guardian Bakugan. This dude took me months to find. I've made a separate video on it. If you'd like to watch it, I'll leave an icon in the top right corner of the screen. You can click on that or check the description. I'll leave the video there as well. Um, I talk a little bit more in depth about him there, but... I've been I was searching for months basically and I finally got him. I got him for a nice deal of $75, which is kind of unheard of. Um and yeah, Aquas Radisson isn't I don't like him the most personality-wise, but in terms of like Bakugan form, he's really really cool. He's got these huge feet, again not diecast, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. And so he's got feet and then he's got a crest. We can pop him open like that and then he's also got these little like little feather things in the back here. Um, in terms of the dub, he was okay. He just wasn't the best. And he's also got a mouth that opens. Um, and yeah, that's Aquas Radisson fully opened. I like to keep his feet down a little bit so they actually touch the card. Um, he is at 850 G, so pretty good for Mectanium Surge. I'll go ahead and pull up some pictures here while I talk about him. Um, I, I think his personality and transition was very reminiscent of a lot of mectanium surge like arc one was really really good and then arc two is just it was just okay um <laughs> and i think that also represents radisson as a personality like tristar really 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 good radisson kind of a downgrade in the show radisson had like a good fighting ethic and all that stuff and his his form is just so sick uh, and then, of course, I want to go ahead and briefly mention his um, combination. So, of course, he can fuse with uh, Subterra Rock Store to form Betacore. And so, again, that just, you know, fuses together. Like in the show, he got Rock Store uh, kind of temporarily from Mira. And then, of course, that just forms together. I'll pull up some pictures of that as well so you can take a look. Um, but they just fuse together. And, uh, yeah, they were able to fight and all that good stuff. So there's Rock's Tour, and just like his mentioned, I wanted to throw him in there. But, of course, this is all about just, like, Aquas and Maruchos. I guess Rock's Tour was kind of a Guardian background of Marucho, but really it was Mira. Um, but, yeah, Radisson, really, really awesome. And uh, I love the color scheme. We go back to this. It's silver on blue on red. A lot of that reminiscent red we see from Aquamos, which is you know, pretty nice. I, I will admit, I am more of a fan of the red than I thought I was going to be. Um, you know, Preus had that purple and stuff. There's like a purple and yellow that went on for a while between Season 1 and Season 2. But, of course, it changes, and I'm okay with it. Um, so to close Radisson, we, of course, have to close his little mouth and his crest. And then his feet come up like so. And then his wings go in so all the manual parts and then it's like tail wings and then head and that is aquas radisson and guys that'll be the end of this video i hope you enjoyed who is your favorite guardian bakugan let me know in the comments below other than that my name is jesse and i'll see you in the next video peace out
Hello everyone, my name is Jesse and welcome back to another Bakugan review. Today we're going to be taking a look at all the main bad guys from all of Bakugan. So from season 1 up to season 4, I'm not including um, Baku Tech or anything like that, just the Americanized versions. Um, so Battle Brawlers, Nubistroya, Gandalian Invaders, and Mectanium Surge. So we're going to be taking a look at all of those. Um, a couple notes before I get started. I am not including any of the Mectogans from Mectanium Surge just because I don't like them and I'd rather stick to strictly Bakugan. Um, another thing is I'm not including any like side characters. I'm doing strictly what is looked at as the main characters. So you're not going to see any of the Vexos or any of the... Um, any of the Gundalian Bakugan that were like kind of side characters, you actually saw them more than Darak in some cases, but I'm not looking at those just because I don't have them and it would take way too long for me to collect them, so I'm strictly looking at the main bad guys. Um, also, I'm already hearing you guys in the comments, no, I am not including Darkish Reaper. Um, <laughs> I sold him a long time ago. I don't have one, and I also don't really... I mean, he is a Guardian Bakugan, but he was only in it for a couple episodes before Hydronoid just completely stole the show. Um, so here is his honorary recognition. Now, this is what Darkest Reaper looks like. He was Masquerade's first Guardian Bakugan before Masquerade sacrificed him to the Doom Dimension. Um, so, with him out of the way, I hope that I don't hear any more comments. Oh, but you didn't include Darkest Reaper. Where is Reaper? There's his honorable mention. So I hope I can please you guys in some way at least. <laughs> Uh, another quick thing, guys, I do want to let you know that I do buy and sell Bakugan, so if you are interested, you can check out my eBay or Macari links in the description, as well as if you have any business inquiries with me, uh, feel free to email me using the email in the description below. So, without further ado, let's begin. For today's video, I thought it would be pretty unique to use the uh, custom-made Doom card I have to open all the Bakugan, so that's what we're going to be using. I know in the show it's an ability card, but I've made mine a gate card just for pretty much this purpose, so I can use it to pop open Bakugan. So yeah, let's get started. Alright, so first up on our list is Hydronoid, uh, the, the one everyone wants, the, the, the most evil Bakugan of them all, uh, Hydronoid. So yeah, we're going to be taking a look at him first. Um, so I'm sure you guys are pretty aware of Hydronoid and who he is. Um, he is Masquerade's technically second Guardian Bakugan. As I mentioned earlier, I'm not using Reaper in this video. But uh, yeah, so we have Hydronoid here, uh, single-headed. Um, he comes at 500 Gs, which is pretty good for a, you know, Season 1 Bakugan. And, uh, yeah, just overall super clean design. Um, I got this guy way back in the day for $161 and, like, 50 cents or something like that. So, uh, nowadays online they're going for, like, four or 500 I believe. I honestly haven't looked in a while, um, but I know it's insane. And uh, yeah, easily one of my favorite like evil Bakugan in the show. They never made a solid darkest color of him. He only came in the Translucent in the Masquerade pack, which uh, just adds to his rarity, I think. And um, yeah, just a Bakugan I really, really, really like. And he's definitely like number one in my collection. <laughs> so to close Hydronoid, you're going to want to shut all his manual parts. So all the horns in the back here. And then this little tail piece right there, and that goes in like that. I always flip him upside down for this one part because his feet like to get stuck right here. So make sure his feet are in good position um, before you end up closing them or else he'll have a lot of problems. So always make sure the feet fold back. That goes in, the feet go in, and then I just kind of hold them together to push down his head. There you go. Up next on the list, we have Dual Hydronoid, so uh, Hydronoid's evolution, and at this point he grows another head, so yeah. This is Dual Hydronoid, and this is the translucent version of him. Um, so as part of the Masquerade pack here, he has 650 Gs, which is very, very um, strong. And then here is his like solid counterpart. Um, this is a B2 that I custom painted the, the wheel onto, so it's not actually like heavy metal. Um, but this one has 540 Gs, so uh, a little bit of a comparison there, um, just based on the strength between the uh, the two there. So 650 to 540, so, you know, uh, a little bit different. But 
Um, really like Dual Hydroid. This is one of like the first Bakugan I remember having as a kid. And I, I don't know, I just, he th I thought he was so cool because he's got two heads and just how like you can move the heads up and down and stuff and manipulate how they look is really fun to me. And uh, yeah, so definitely uh, the most memorable of them. And uh, I think it's just because he was like the first bad guy released. Really memorable one for me just for that reason in particular. So to close Dual Hydronoid, I flip him upside down so that his feet go in and then I kind of just tuck the heads in like that. Next is Alpha Hydronoid, the third evolution of Hydronoid. And this time, of course, he's got three heads. So let's pop out his manual part, so all his feet, and then the horn here, and pop him open. So yeah, really cool one here. We got him at 600 Gs. And this one's a little bit different from the one in the show. So as you can see like on the picture on screen here, like the heads on this one are actually supposed to be where the hands are, but in the toy form, they, they flipped them. So he's actually got a mouth up here, like two heads up here instead of down by the hands, which is really interesting. I don't know why they did that, um, but still super, super cool. And uh, Alpha Hydronoid may not be my favorite of the Hydronoids, but he's really awesome. He's got like a cool, um, like spinning, like grinding wheel on him, which is really awesome. And then I also have his solid darkest heavy metal form at 670 G's, so the darkest one here is actually stronger. Um, but interestingly enough, I bought mine and he's missing a mouth, which the seller did not specify. I don't even know if the seller knew it was broken, but it is. And so yeah, mine's a little handicapped. But uh, yeah, really, really cool. The heavy metal on this one's nice as well, just for rolling and playing with. But yeah, Alpha Hydronoid, super cool. One of my favorite ones, especially in fights. So to close Alpha Hydronoid, all you have to do is roll the feet in obviously, and then push the horn back. And then I like to do its head, other heads, and then arms. And that locks them into place. Up next, we have the DS exclusive White Naga. So like the actual really, really bad villain of the first season, Bakugan Battle Brawlers. Um, this is the White Naga, the DS exclusive. And uh, yeah, so really cool. I'm a huge fan of how his mouth looks in this. Like I think that is so sick. Um, yeah, too bad we didn't really get Silent Naga. We just got this version. I know people have made some online, but uh, yeah, he's he's really cool. He's such a unique Bakugan. Again, no attribute, which is, you know, like the show, he didn't have an attribute, um, but he stole the Silent Core in order to get powerful and all that. He comes in at 650 Gs, so similar to um, both my dual hydronoid and alpha hydronoid. So right up there in that power, which is, you know, pretty common. I really like the color scheme on him. So all of this white on blue is really nice. In the show, they did more purple, which I also kind of agree with and like better. But for a Bakugan, that's more uncommon and you can only get in the DS exclusive like game pack. Uh, and the color scheme and stuff is quite worth it, I think. Um, I also like the hands here. That silver is really nice. But to close them, you just shut his feet like this. And then he's like most Dragonoids, fold the wings in first, and then lock his head back into place. And there you go. Up next on our list, we have probably my favorite of all the bad guys, Viper Helios. This is specifically like the Hex Viper Helios, the special anime colored one. Um, absolutely love this Bakugan. <laughs> um... Just pop his manual parts out before I get talking about him. So his feet come out and then his horn pops out and then boom. Yeah, so I just love the spread. Like he pops out and he's huge, which is really, really cool. Um, he's at 480 Gs there, which is, you know, kind of weaker than, than even Hydronoid. So it's kind of interesting on how they did that. But a lot of like New Vestoria stuff kind of reset in terms of G power um, instead of going up. But yeah. I just love how like big and large he looks. Uh, the wings here are really cool and just make him easily one of my favorites um, in terms of color scheme and everything. This is actually the only like bad Bakugan that's Pyrus. I mean the like the only like evolution line. Pretty much every other bad Bakugan is uh, in Darkest, which is pretty interesting um, that they make Helios you know so evil as a Pyrus Bakugan. But I liked it. It, it worked with the show and all that, so uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, one cool thing about Viper is that if you lower his horn some, you can actually move his mouth out, which 
pretty cool if you want to make him look a little bit more intimidating, have his mouth out like that. I think that's super cool. <laughs> um, he is actually kind of complicated to close, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, sometimes it takes me a couple tries, but go ahead and put his feet in and then lock his horn into place. And then what I like to do is fold the wings. So take your wings and fold them in with your thumbs. And then I like to just lock them in like that so that they're stuck. And then his head goes in and then his tail kind of clips in under his head to get him locked into place. And that is Viper Helio. <laughs> Up next, we have Cyborg Helios, which I have mine custom painted, if you couldn't tell. Um, but this is a Pyrus custom painted Cyborg Helios. Um, you've also, you'll see him as like the Max, like a Maxis Helios set. Um, I had that at one point, but I didn't like it, so I got rid of it. I actually sold it. Um, but you'll see that as part of like the thing too with like the Maxis set. But um, Cyborg Helios opens, you pop his two feet out, and then his horn, and then he's also got a little tail right here, and then a place. Um, for like battle gear or you know any kind of traps or whatever um, mine has trouble opening But it's not because of like the paint or anything It's just he's always had trouble opening and I think a lot of cyborg helioses have a lot of trouble opening So we're just gonna kind of help him out here by popping his wings out. There we go. So he's starting to come out Yeah, there we go. So this is my custom painted cyborg helios um, As you can see I put a lot of time and love into getting him how he is But this is just essentially the next evolution of helios um, he starts getting more mechanical parts and becoming more robotic um, than what Viper Helios was in order to get stronger in the show. Um, he's at 680 Gs right there, so getting a lot stronger, which is nice. I like to see evolutions get stronger instead of weaker. That's Cyborg Helios, and he's pretty easy to close as well. Um, you just shut all his manual parts, so horn, feet, and tail, and then his head kind of goes in, and then his wings lock his head into place so he doesn't pop out again. Up next is a huge fan favorite. This is Helios Mark II, so the actual anime accurate version as well, the black version. Um, there are multiple versions of this guy, including Battle Gear compatible ones, so Helios' is Battle Gear. Um, he has two of them, so the Twin Destructor and the Zookinator. Um, this does this is not a battle gear compatible one, so uh, I don't have the battle gear for him But he's still really cool and pretty easy to like open and stuff You just pop his feet out then his horn and he's also got these movable like jet booster things on his wings and he sits at 540 G's right there and Just really really sick Bakugan. Um, he's a Japanese exclusive. You can only get him in Japan They never made him in America so that this adds to his rarity um, I think nowadays these guys go for like two hundred dollars, maybe maybe more. I got mine for ninety, and I actually found him almost immediately. I, I said I was looking for one, and some dude offered me one within like the hour. Uh, so yeah, getting him for ninety dollars and almost instantaneously is is really nice. So super proud of that and super happy with it. And just he looks so nice. Oh, and he's got his core right there, really really sick. And uh, yeah, he's. I, I see why he's a fan favorite of, of everyone. Um, just an awesome Bakugan. And like I say, there's many variations. You've got like the, instead of the black body, you've got the gray one. Then you've got the one that's got like the green horn and he's Battle Gear compatible and lays down. Um, you've got like the crystal ones. You've got all these different attributes. So, um, you know, he's, he's really nice in terms of like, you know, how many you can get and what you can get. And he's a big one for collectors. Um, the only difference is in the show, he's actually got hands that come out right here. Um, the toy never did that, which is kind of weird and disappointing. But um, yeah, overall, just really cool Bakugan and uh, definitely a fan favorite. To shut Helios here, all we have to do is fold in his feet and his horn. And then make sure his jet booster things and his wings are up, like so. And then what I like to do is sort of like clasp everything together because there's these little hooks on his wings here that kind of make it a little hard so you want to make sure that you get them all uh, together so you're not accidentally breaking anything and so I kind of just mush it all together and then uh, make sure he clicks and that's how you put Helios back together <laughs> Up 
Up next, we're moving on to Season 3 with Darak, uh, Darkest Darak. And he's got a couple manual parts, so his feet come out like this. He's got four feet. Yep, there we go. And then I'll go ahead and pop him down. So there's Darak. And uh, yeah, he comes at 600 Gs there. Um, you know, in terms of like the bad guy for the third season, I felt like he didn't get a whole lot of recognition because he was shrouded over and crowded by all these other bad guys. And as the like, he's like the main antagonist, he kind of didn't get as much time as I felt maybe he needed um, because it was spent highlighting all these other guys. And I guess that's a sales tactic, but as being the main bad guy, you know, I wish kind of he got more screen time. Um, but Derek here uh, has a Battle Gear compatibility mode, so put down his wings and his tail. And then you can take his Battle Gear, which is Air Core. I have the gold one here, which is also show accurate, and you can pop that down. And that, that definitely makes him look better, in my opinion. Um, I think a lot of the Gundalian invaders Bakugan need the Battle Gear to actually look like Bakugan, like good, powerful Bakugan. Because without it, he kind of just looks, literally, he looks flat. Um, but with this on there, he looks a whole lot better. Um, so yeah, Air Corps is at 50 Gs because it's the gold one. Um, so, uh, pretty good for Battle Gear. I think it's also just, you know, in general, this, this looks, the gold looks the best. Um, the silver is also pretty cool, but the, nothing beats the gold. <laughs> um, curiously enough, uh, since we've gone back to Darkest Bakugan, um, they change from being like purple, like black and purple, like black, purple, and red, or black, purple, and yellow, to black, green, and yellow, which is a huge difference, um, which is one that I kind of like because it goes along with, like, DNA and um, kind of like some of Derek's history or whatever. Uh, so as we'll get into it, you know, the transfer of DNA evolves Derek into Phantom Derek, but I think it, I don't know, I like it. Plus, like, DNA, you've got the DNA codes, which are down here and stuff. It just, it kind of works, you know. Derek's also really easy to close. It'll just pop all of his wings back up into form. Um, shut his manual parts, which are his feet right here. And then his head and his tail just kind of roll in together, like so. Make sure that clicks in, and then his uh, wings pop up like that. Air Core, on the other hand, is a pain in the butt. So I always end up closing this little, like, horn piece first and then folding the wing pieces in and pushing them in like so. Uh, really complicating, it took me a while. I almost never get it right the first time. Pop that in and then lower this piece to lock them into place. But see, it, it still just likes to come out, but close enough. <laughs> come on, get in there. <laughs> Up next on our list is Derek's Evolution Phantom Derek, who evolved from using Drago's DNA, uh, Blitz Dragonoid's DNA, to become stronger. And uh, Emperor Baroni has actually renamed Derek. He's like, you're now Phantom Derek, which is kind of cool. Because, um, you know, we've always, like, seen Bakugan evolve and, like, their name comes from their evolution. Like, Dan never got to choose Drago's name, but Emperor Baronius did. So that's pretty cool, uh, especially considering Derek is, like, the other side of the coin to the Dragonoid. So I don't know, it's really weird. Um, but uh, same color scheme here. I do like this little like vent style that's on Phantom Derek. Um, let's go ahead and pop him open. So he kind of looks like a Wormquake or a Centipoid, which is um, a bit strange. And uh, he comes in at 820 Gs. Uh, not sure why they'd make him look like this. But, uh, yeah, that's that's how he looks. No, I'm, I'm kidding. He has a button on the top because he's a Baku double strike. So you'll uh, pop that down. And, uh, yeah, that actually gives him, like, his full form, which actually has 100 extra Gs. Um, so you add that on. And, uh, yeah, I, I like the design of this one. He's much, like, larger, which is, is pretty nice. But Derek is actually the only Bakugan who doesn't have, like, a set um, battle gear so i've actually been putting air core on him and i think it looks way way better than it did even on derek like i think it looks even better on phantom derek but that's just my opinion but um yeah i don't know i really like it yeah he's just he's kind of chunky um in the show though i really liked how he looked like there's a specific scene in like the second to last episode i'll try and pull up a screenshot like i remember watching that and being like yeah Phantom Derek is really cool. Um, <laughs> so his ball form may not be that great, but 
his like show form I really like. So to close him, he folds up his head like this, and then the tail and the back folds up as well. And then his, his wings kind of just, they're, it's actually not too bad. They just fold right in and they click. So it's pretty easy to actually get him into ball form, which I really appreciate. All right, last on our list is Racenoid from the first arc of Mectanium Surge. If you remember in the intro, I'm not doing the second arc with, um, with like the, uh, Mectagan, so like, uh, Korodagon or whatever his name is. I'm not doing that just because I'd rather stick to Bakugan and not the Mectagans. Um, so Racenoid, I've made a video on as well. He's, he's really awesome. I, I love Racenoid. Um, so we've upgraded from color now. So we just got black and silver, which I think looks amazing. Um, my Rasinoid's also die cast, so he's actually got some metal on him, which is really nice. Let's go ahead and pop him open. He's got a G power wheel here. So yeah, uh, Rasinoid is, of course, the mutated version of uh, Phantom Derek. So um, you learn in Mectanium Surge or some lore, but essentially he gets mutated and he becomes Rasinoid, which is really cool and just a kind of like unique piece to... Uh, the continuing storyline of like Dragonoid versus Derachnoid. And uh, I don't know, Razanoid in my opinion is just a sick looking toy. Um, he's big, he's scary looking. I love the mouthpiece on here. It's just awesome. And the only manual parts he's got are um, really like just these little corners on his wings and then his mouth pops open. But the, even the legs themselves are already displayed. Um, he's got a G-Power spin wheel here, which I've gone a, a more in-depth review, like his own personal review. Um, so if you want to check that out, I'll put a little icon in the corner for you to check out. Um, but uh, yeah, I love the color scheme. I like how you can manipulate his arms and stuff. It's just, it's really cool. And uh, even in the show, he looks like a bad guy, which I appreciate. Like, I think some of these Bakugan, like... They kind of look bad, but then you're not so sure. Like, especially, like, some of the main villain side characters. Um, they just don't always look that bad, but, like, Ra Raisinoid, he does, which is really nice. Um, and, yeah, definitely, like, a great, like, final villain, technically. Um, I'm not really counting Wiseman's, like, Mectogans and stuff. I'm, I'm not really a fan of them. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, just Raisinoid, really cool. And to close him, um, first we're going to shut his mouth, of course and then his wings. So let's go ahead and get those shut. So we're gonna close little corners on his wings. And then I like to kind of um, keep his feet closed, fold his mouth in and then lock everything down and then dip his hands underneath because his feet will pop out. Dip his hands underneath and then seal it with by shutting his wings. And boom, that's how you get Razanoid shut. Other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Who is your favorite Bakugan? Who's your favorite villain Bakugan of that I've just showcased here? Who do you think is the coolest? Who do you think is the strongest? That's actually a pretty interesting question. So uh, let me know in the comments below, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. My name is Jesse. Peace out. Hello everyone, my name is Jesse and welcome back to a very special Bakugan review. Today we're going to be reviewing Mr. Hotshot himself, Shun, and all his Guardian Bakugan. So uh, all the Legacy series from Season 1 all the way up to the uh, second arc of Mechanium Surge, which is Season 4. Uh, we're going to be doing a pretty in-depth review of each of these guys you see here on screen. Um, so everyone from Skyrus all the way to Jakor. And... Um, just, you know, going into all the different specialities they have, all the gimmicks and all that good stuff. Uh, I don't want to waste anyone's time. Without further ado, let's jump into it. All right, before we get super started here, uh, the first card of the day we're going to be using is Skyrus. So this Skyrus card here, gold card, pretty good on Ventus, 150 right here. Card reads, if a Skyrus loses this battle, its owner may take all ability cards that were played in this battle, including his opponents, and add them to his unused pile. Pretty awesome there. Um, so we're going to be using this card just to open uh, the back of Ghana right here. All right, first Bakugan on our list is Ventus Skyrus. So this right here is a rather rare Bakugan to find now. Um, it's been very sought after by collectors, so it has become slowly harder to find. Um, this is a B1 Ventus Skyrus. 
open core as you can see there there is no plastic covering it so the metal is completely exposed right there uh, which is really awesome so super happy to have this bakugan uh, it is still in very very well kept condition uh, the Ventus symbol there is not even worn out or anything. It's just, it's, it's so good. Um, it's just, the paint on this is fantastic. Um, I love Skyrus as Shun's first Bakugan. She was such an awesome character and had a very good story arc overall. Uh, especially this ball design here I'm loving. Uh, this fire-esque design. Looks more like wind really, but really, really loving it. Um, so one cool thing about Skyrus here is that she has a gimmick. Um, it was sort of like a re-release. They re-released Skyrus as a special attack Bakugan a little bit later on after her initial release. Um, and it was called like Jump Skyrus. So you could do this very particular backspin um, and jump her onto a gate card. You could also technically use this to jump over other Bakugan, though th the skill it took was probably almost too much to even be worth bothering because um, you were able to jump onto a card which would be cool to impress like your enemy or your opponent or whatever uh, but trying to do it to jump over another Bakugan was also pretty difficult to begin with and it all uh, worked using this uh, little like f like feather she had on her head right here um, by doing that backspin it was able to make her jump um, which was really awesome so let's go ahead and open Skyrus here. She's got two manual parts. She has just the two feet right here. And we can go ahead and lay her on the card. Like that. And I don't like that the, the feather isn't like deployable by it. Like it, it kind of flicks up. You have to, there you go. So you have to like use your finger or like flip her upside down really quick and get it. But um, here's Skyrus right here in all her glory. You can see right here she is 320 G. So for a like B1 Bakugan overall, pretty decently strong. Uh, nothing, nothing to complain about there. She's pretty iconic. I think this is a very nostalgic Bakugan, um, and the ball design itself is really, really good. It, it's kind of like Dragos. Like Dragos is really nice and it's very iconic, and that's what makes it so great. Like this is Skyrish. She's a bird, um, and that's this form is what makes her iconic. I think. Um, so it's a closed Skyrus. It's a bit complicated. We'll start by shutting her feet. And then you kind of have to get the, I believe it's the head and the tail first. So close the head and the tail and you have to close them together like this. And then you can kind of clip the wings in like that and just make sure she's all pushed together. And that is Skyrus. Up next on our list is Storm Skyrus. So the evolution of Skyrus after she fought Oberus and evolved. Storm Skyrus is a drastic upgrade to what Skyrus was. Um, in terms of ball form, I'm not sure, but in the storyline, like very much so. But uh, as you can see here on Storm Skyrus, the design's a lot different. We lose a lot of that weird wind, like wind flame design and more of like uh, some holes and just like some kind of like splatter esque effect. Um, there's a cool arrow here, which is nice. And then the Ventus symbol is on the back, which is curious because the other one had the had it on the wing. Um, but you still got these two like holes right here where the um, screws go. Uh, Skyrus had something similar to that. Um, one thing about Skyrus is she only fully opens, like she has two manual parts, which are the legs, but you can't quite open them all the way without busting the wing open. So you have to lay her on the card first. Um, this one also has a little fan that can flip up, very similar uh, effect. You can do that jumping effect with it. Um, so it's right there, which is pretty cool. And let's go ahead and open her up so that uh, we can get the full form. So again, gotta open her up and then pop the legs. And then we can place her down, make sure that uh, little like feather hood, it, feather thing on top is flipped up. And here is Storm Skyrus. So, uh, a bit different design. We got different colors. In the show, she was more like red than purple in areas, which is kind of curious. Um, I don't know why the ball form would do purple when you could just easily do red. Um, Skyrus has a, the Storm Skyrus here has a couple things I'm not a fan of, such as these little floppy bits. Um, they're not put on any kind of spring or, or any kind of like tension, so they just kind of flop around, which is really annoying when you're trying to display her. Uh, same with the hood here. It just flops 
and it's it's really hard to get when again you're trying to display them um but skyrus here is 500 g's so a huge upgrade to my b1 skyrus um which is really nice especially if you plan to use this to brawl um and yeah i'm not too big of a fan of the huge feet here uh they kind of remind me of you know kind of like dragos where they're they look like lava affected but you know obviously in Ventus form but there's no color on them or anything which is kind of disappointing the body shape itself is also kind of like rectangular which i'm not a fan of um but the head i like and the wingspan i like i like really big bakugan so looking at her head on is, is pretty nice here um but other than that you know i'm not overly overly a fan of storm sky race in the show 100 percent. but as a ball form it's just an annoying Bakugan, and uh, I don't know, compared to regular Skyrus, it's not all that great. To add on to that uh, annoyance, Sky Storm Skyrus here is pretty complicated to close, so of course you close the feet first, and then the head has to go and connect with the tail in the back. There's a little tab there, as you can see, so you got to lock that into place, okay? And then you got to make sure that these floppy bits are in, and then you can close the wings, so... Yeah, kind of complicated. Once you know how to do it, though, it's pretty easy. But it just adds to the annoyance of trying to figure it out. We're going to do a quick intermission here, guys. Uh, I do want to let you know I do buy and sell Bakugan. If you're interested, you can check out the links below in the description. You can check out my eBay or Mercari, whichever you prefer. I also do like other business deals and custom paint Bakugan. You can either message me on Instagram or check out my email. Again, all in the description. Uh, with that out of the way, let's get back to the video. Alright guys, we're going to transition here and look at a different card for the next set of Bakugan. Um, we have Tricolor Boost, which fe features Ingram here. Um, it says Bakugan owned by players with at least three different attributes in the game. Get 150 G power. Um, pretty nice on Pyrus and Ventus here, 250 and 200, which is really awesome. Yep. And uh, yeah, we're going to be using these to open the rest of the Bakugan here. All right, up next is Season 2. So, uh, new Vistroia, Shudden gets a new Guardian Bakugan. Um, this is Ventus Ingram. In the Americanized version, she was a girl. In the Japanese version, it was a boy. Um, so I'm just going to refer to it as she because, you know, that's the show I watched. Um, Ventus Ingram is pretty cool. Uh, this is the translucent version, which according to the wiki, I didn't know this until I was researching this video. According to the wiki, um... This specific, like, Ventus, translucent Ventus Ingram only comes in, like, a DVD bundle. Not too much to look at in terms of the translucent version here right now. Uh, you can see there's a little bit of detailing and, like, featherness here. It's really hard to see on the translucent, which is unfortunate. So, let's go ahead and open Ingram. She has two manual parts, the feet, and then there's one more later on that we'll get to. Uh, so pop her open right there, and my Ingram for some reason has a very hard time, like her either her magnet's weak or the plastic to get to it's very thick, and so she has a hard time um, sort of like staying upright, which is weird, um, but you can see her here, um, really awesome wingspan, I love it a lot, um, but yeah, you can see she's kind of crooked and, and things just aren't, like she doesn't stay on the card at all very well. Um, but check out how long she is like that's really cool and this is the part that you're supposed to be able to like you know sort of you know roll off Bakugan and like jump over him and stuff um, but yeah cool wingspan it's like multi-layered there's different wings here there there on the top and then of course this tail bit you can also like pop this sort of up if you can get her to stand right and it'll be like up above her head most of the time though it just lays back like this um, so that one extra manual part is like a mask, so you see this bird head here, you can pop that up. It doesn't go up all the way, but it does turn her into like a bird, so cool little mask, which is super interesting there. Um, I don't normally put it up, but it is there, so you know, if you like it, you can use it. Uh, 650 G's there, so again, uh, compared to my Storm Skyrest, huge, huge upgrade. That's kind of hard to see, there you go, 650, and uh, yeah. Uh, in the show, Ingram was pretty cool, and I have not too much to say about it. So to close Ingram, really easy, make sure you have that mask down, and then you can shut the feet right here, so feet close, and then it's it's kind of like layered, so head goes down, and then you trap the uh, wings here, and that should, uh, for the most part, get her head, 
just got to make sure you do that and then it's this one and this one that'll lock the head definitely into place and then this back piece just kind of rolls up and clicks into place and that is Ventus Ingram all right up next is my translucent Ventus Master Ingram um, so again, part of just my new Vestroia set, if you're unfamiliar, where I collected all the translucent versions of the new Vestroia set. Um, but this is Ventus Master Ingram, a Bakutech Bakugan uh, Japan exclusive. Um, if you don't know what Bakutech is, some people think that they're a totally separate branch of Bakugan, which yes, they are, um, coming out sort of near the Mechanium Surge arc. But they also did like these Bakugan as they're considered Bakutech, um, which is really interesting. So. Uh, I don't know quite the whole reasoning for that, but I don't know. It is what it is. Uh, so you can see a lot more on this translucent Ventus Ingram. Uh, the, it, the plastic is a bit of a clearer color, uh, so you can kind of see this wind design going on, which is nice. Uh, curiously enough, Ventus Master Ingram is the only Bakugan to have two attribute symbols, one here and one on the other side. You will find no other Bakugan like that. Um, I don't know why that is, but it's pretty cool and uh, a nice little trivia question, I guess. Ventus Master Ingram, so in the show it was very off-putting because he turned straight into a dude after he evolves, which is like, what? But, um, I don't know, Ventus Master Ingram is definitely like cooler, I think. Um, so he's only got two manual parts, technically three we'll get into. And so you just pop the feet open and then we'll go ahead and drop him. And so this is Ventus Master Ingram. Really nice. And uh, you can see there the two attribute symbols, it's kind of hard to see in the, the lighting there, but two right on the wings. Again, no Bakugan like that except this one. As you can see here, 560 Gs, so not as strong as Ingram, but uh, this is like a Japanese Bakugan, so for some reason they're weaker. Um, it's just how it is there. I don't know quite the reasoning behind that. Maybe they came first or something. Um, but Master Ingram's pretty cool, and uh, he's got hands this time, which you can see, which are really nice. Um, and then the cool little like mohawk thing, which is like his staple, I guess, is really cool as well. Um, I'm really a fan of the gold, so I think the gold's a huge improvement. Um, it looks really nice on this translucent, especially. So you've got like a darker, uh, like translucent green, like a green blue, and you've got this nice highlighter green, and then you got the gold and the black, which is awesome. Like gold and black always look good together. In my opinion, this is probably one of the um, the better looking, like, anime accurate Bakugan. Um, not totally, but it is really nice. Um, and so another unique feature of, uh, Master Ingram is he's got this little tail piece, like a peg, um, which is a little bit hard to get out. And so it's right here, and everyone's like, oh, it's a tail. And I guess it could be a tail, but... Um, what's interesting about it is that there was supposed to be a, another Bakugan to go along with Master Ingram, which was, uh, Shadow Wing, but Shadow Wing was never released, so this would have allowed, like, Master Ingram to combine with Shadow Wing, but unfortunately, it was just never released. I have some seen, seen some people take, um, Ingram here, and you can kind of, like, combine Ingram with Master Ingram, so there's, like, a peg here and people will like bend her head down and then stick the peg like in the head or something like that I think and so it doesn't it doesn't quite work like the way you think it would but people try and do it I'm not not a hundred percent sure why but I guess it's an interesting piece of trivia I can't even get it to really work uh, Master Ingram is pretty easy to close so feed in and then everything kind of like Ingram collapses in on itself. Just make sure you get that head and then boom, all together, super easy. Up next, we have Ventus Hawk Tour, um, Shun's third Guardian Bakugan in the third season of the show, Gundalian Invaders. Um, I've done a huge in-depth review of all the main characters from Gundalian Invaders. You can check out the video. There'll be a little icon in the top right corner of the video if you're curious about that. Um, but Hawk Tour here is pretty cool. Uh, this introduced Battle Gear into the show. And um, 
I don't know, Battle Gear I was against, but now I'm for. Um, but taking a look at Hawktor here, he's not overly impressive from the ball form. He's got like a teal color green here, which you kind of see in Ingram. Um, cool little arrow pieces right here, which is really nice. Uh, but other than that, not a whole lot going on. Um, but when you roll him open, uh, he does look pretty sick. So he automatically deploys in Battle Gear form. Not all the Bakugan do that. Then you uh, let out his feet because they're, they're separated. Um, but uh, not overly impressive. He kind of looks like a weird turtle without his battle gear. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. And then his G power is really hidden, so you have to pull his neck back. And then you can see there, 540 Gs. So, um, you know, about the same as Master Ingram there. And then uh, he wouldn't be anything without his battle gear, Swather. So this is Swather right here. And um, his battle gear has two little holes to pop on the pegs here. And that'll pop open. So... There you go, and then these two pieces pop out, uh, which is super nice and gives him a whole lot more depth than, uh, you know, just without the battle gear. Battle gear here has 180 Gs, so you add that on if you're playing the game. Um, but yeah, really, really nice. Um, interesting, like his neck can go all the way down, and then it can also go up. So I don't know what the whole point of that is, if he automatically battle gear deploys. I guess specific battle gear doesn't work or something. Um, maybe that's the case. And then there's two little dudes here that pop open. You can't even see that in the screen, but there's a little manual piece there. Um, the battle gear can't be super complex. Uh, but yeah, that's him in all his glory. Pretty cool with the battle gear, I think. These two pieces are spring-loaded, which is also awesome. Uh, Hawktor in the show, overall, eh, you know, he's okay. <laughs> uh, he's not Skyrus or Ingram, that's for sure. But overall, really awesome Bakugan. Um... Really easy to close as well, just shut the feet, and then, you know, he kind of all just goes in, which is really nice. So, just like that. Uh, no DNA code, not sure if this was just an, uh, an early release or a later release, but no DNA code for the uh, online thing they had going on. And then Swather's also rather easy to close, so make sure you shut these little wings in the back here, so these two dudes fold in. And then make sure you get these wings and then tuck those in. So, like that. And then the wings are the hardest part for some reason. These little spring-loaded things don't always like to go in. I think you have to shut them and the wings kind of at the... Like, I think this has to go in and then this has to go in. And then they have to catch. So I think there's a mechanism somewhere on the side that catches it. But mine are having a hard time wanting to close for some reason. That's what I don't like about Battle Gear. But... There you go, done. <laughs>Next on our list, we're going into Mechanium Surge, the fourth season of Bakugan, and we're starting off with the first arc. We have Ventus Talion. Curiously enough, Shun's first Bakugan, that's not bird-like, um, which is super interesting. We have the DNA code here, which is useless now, but it would allow you to go into the online game and, and put Talion in here. Mechanium Surge was interesting. It claimed to have metal parts, but it really didn't. It, I don't know, It it's very weird, but... They always have some kind of metal. Uh, in this case, Talion's metal is his feet. So these are the actual die-cast metal part of the Bakugan. All this other, like, silver you see here is just painted plastic. I'm going to go ahead and pop Talion open. So, a little bit of trouble here. Um, Got to get the head up. Uh, so Talion, this is what he looks like. He's also got two little hands that come out right here. Um, very hard to get out. There's little pieces that you can, like, get your fingernails into, but it just doesn't really work. Um, another little trivia fact here is Talion was actually remodeled into Wolverine when they did the Marvel vs. Bakugan series, which is pretty awesome. There's also a couple manual pieces here, so he's got two little like knife things on the front and back, which are nice if you can get them out. There we go. Alright, a little bit better. But yeah, kind of look like blades, which are nice. Yeah, so there's Talion in all his glory. Really nice looking Bakugan here. Um, as you can see on the side right here, 850 Gs, so a massive improvement um, from Master Ingram. <laughs> Going from like 560 to 850 is a huge deal. Talion, so they don't have battle gear for mechanic. Well, they, I guess they have battle um, suits or whatnot, but battle gear is, is out of the picture. We have Baku Nano now. I don't have any of the Baku Nano, but if you are curious, um, Talion's Baku Nano is Hammermore, 
and the immobile assault is Zumpha. Uh, so those would clip on to the little peg in the back here, um, and that would go in right there as the Baku Nano. Tegelane here also has a like mutant form, which I don't have, but similar to Mutant Helios and uh, Mercury Dragonoid. But the two pieces can be taken apart and put back onto other Bakugan. Um, so, you know, as you see with all the other mutants, they can combine to, you know, add extra Gs or, you know, different powers and whatnot. Talion's pretty cool. Um, the Mechanium Surge is just a whole weird storyline and all that good stuff. But um, just seeing Talion on my on my desk with all the others makes it so worthwhile. Um, one cool thing I like about Talion is these little arm pieces pop up which is really nice, gives him a ton of depth. You can just see how intricate they get as the seasons keep going. Um, I really like that about him. So that's pretty cool. And I am a pretty decent fan of the design of Talion in the show, meh. But you know, the design's cool, this star is cool. To close Talion, uh, just make sure you get all his manual bits. So get these little things on his arms up, like so. And then make sure you get the hands. So hands got to go back up into the body right there. You can go ahead and shut the feet. So feet go in. And then uh, he all just kind of clasps in on himself. So you can shut the back end and the head and then close that. Make sure you get it over this metal bit though. Right there. And then the hands just go in, the arms or whatever they are. And that is Ventus Talion. Last up is Ventus Jakor um, from the second arc of Mechanium Surge, Shun's final guardian Bakugan. I've done a pretty big extensive video on Magma Fury. If you want to check it out, I'll leave a link in the description. Um, Jakor is a Baku uh, Sky Raider, so when he pops down on a car, he flies into the air, which is really awesome, very similar. Um, exactly like Fusion Dragonoid, if you've seen my previous video on all the Dragonoid evolutions. Um, but yeah, so... Jakor, pretty cool. Um, the quality of this Bakugan feels much better from Talion. Uh, this, 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 uh, this isn't even metal; it's plastic, but it feels much high, more high quality. I love like the grid pattern, like fence design, the scratching, the crisscross scratching on this. Really, really awesome. Um, I'm a huge fan of that. It, it, it's almost like an alligator scale, but it's not quite. Jakor also wasn't, you know, very bird-like at all. Just kind of more robotic and everything which, nah, for Shun, kind of weird. Um, but other than that, I don't have too much to say about Jakor. Let's go ahead and pop him open. Uh, he is the one of the very few Bakugan to actually be completely, um, be, being able to completely open without any manual parts, uh, which is super awesome. So I'm going to put him on the card here. He's going to fly into the air, um, probably hit his head, and then we can get into the review again. <laughs> yep, there we go. <laughs> so uh, Jakor here, right? Uh, in all his glory. Really, really interesting. He's just got giant robot arms uh, that flop around. Really cool spring here I'm a fan of. Uh, but uh, other than that, you know, completely deployed. Um, really nice. Uh, on his chest here, got 940 Gs. So the strongest Bakugan of all the uh, Shun's Guardian Bakugan. So, you know, as, as the Bakugan got you know, more popular and the seasons progressed, they got stronger. Uh, so yeah, Jakor, really cool. Um, and then of course, he's also got his two uh, like buddies here, his apprentices or whatever. So here's Orbium and then Skytrus, which is right here. And um, yeah, these combine, they, they hook onto them with little pegs. Um, so you've got like one there and then Skytrus has one on her neck. Uh, but they combine to form Magma Fury. Again, if you wanna see that video, link in the description to check it out. Um, but these two are like his apprentices, and um, you know they they form that cool uh, that cool Bakugan with them. To close Jakor, I've had some experience with this one. It can be done very fast if you do it right. So these these feet are spring loaded, right? Um, and so if you're trying to do cool tricks and you mess up a lot, you you want to be able to do this fast. So make sure you have his feet shut, right? And then close at least this section of his hands and then push that all down and usually with a little bit of pressure like you think you're going to break it but you're not that will lock all that into place super quick and then you can shut the head um, and then the feet here or the hands here 
and those just click in and that is the fastest way I found to do it and if you get good at it you can do it like really really quick which is nice um, so that is Ventus Jacor. All right, guys, that was the Shun Guardian Bakugan review. Let me know what your favorite Guardian Bakugan of Shun's was. I want to know. Let me know in the comments. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, drop a comment about it, and uh, subscribe. I do videos like this all the time. Um, if you're a Bakugan fan, this is the channel to be at. Um, so I highly recommend you click that subscribe button. And if you want to see my videos as soon as they drop, click that bell. My name's Jesse, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out. Hello everyone, my name is Jesse and welcome back to another Bakugan review. Today we're going to be reviewing all the main Subterra Bakugan characters. So we're going to look at everything from Season 1 with Gorum all the way to Season 4 with Mectanium Surge with Rock's Tour. And we're going to go through all of these and uh, give a big in-depth review. Before we get started on the video guys, I do want to remind you that I buy and sell Bakugan. You can check out the links below in the description. You can check out my eBay and Mercari. If you have any business inquiries with me, feel free to email me with the email down below. With that out of the way guys, let's begin. For today's video, we're going to be using a Gorum card right here. Gold Gorum card, good for chaos surprisingly. Um, but it says uh, each Gorum receives an additional G-Power bonus from this card, so we're going to be using this card to open up today's Bakugan. First up on our list, we have a B1 Subterra Gorum. So this is all the way from Season 1. This is Julie's first Guardian Bakugan, and Gorum is probably my favorite, I think. Either him or Hammer Gorum. Um... I don't know, a lot of the Subterra Bakugan look the same, but Gorum really set the standard, I think. Um, first off, let's take a look at the ball here. So we've got the usual Subterra, so a tan on like a, a nice like copper, uh, copper like accent colors. Gorum's got a little face here, which I think is really cool. And the face is definitely just like a highlight of who Gorum is, like you can always identify Gorum that way. He's got these two tiny legs here as well, and that's the only manual parts, which is really, really cool. Um, they're just so tiny, it's interesting. He's got a little hole right here. Uh, I believe that's like a choking hazard thing. And then, of course, his Subterra symbol right there. Uh, but for the most part, that is all the ball form has to show us. Let's go ahead and pop him open. Ooh, there we go. And Gorm here rests at 450 Gs, which for a B1 Bakugan is pretty, pretty good. Overall, I really like the design. You know, you've got his hands here, which are pretty, you know, pretty signature for Gorm there. So his hands there. And just, I like the moss on his shoulders. They really captured it. I'll put some pictures up just to show you, like, the similarities in the show there. So you can see he's got his moss um, on his, like, shoulders and stuff, which is really cool. And, and overall, just how they captured it. Um, however, in the show, he is, like, a darker color scheme um, that they didn't really do for any Subterra Bakugan except, like, the reverse attribute, which is really interesting. Or flipping the attribute colors around. Um, so... Uh, as, in terms of Gorum, this is about as accurate as we can get unless someone gets the rare, like, chocolate Gorum. Um, so yeah, that's Gorum, and then and to close him, you just close his feet right here, and then these two pieces really just close in on each other. Super easy. And that's Gorum. Up next, we have Hammer Gorum, which is the evolution of Gorum after he beats Clayf. Uh, the one of the like legendary warrior Bakugan. So Hammer Gorm is essentially just Gorm, but much bigger. And uh, he's got like a nice like pole arm type of thing in the show, which is really cool. Uh, so same thing with uh, regular Gorm that Hammer Gorm has is just the feet pop open. But again, this time they're really big. Um, you kind of get a more almost geo pattern, like it's very square patternized instead of like lines and stuff like regular Gorm, which is interesting. Um, it almost reminds me of like a Mayan type of design for some reason, uh, but yeah. So let's go ahead and pop them open. This is Hammer Gorum, and he rests at 480 Gs, so a little bit more powerful than regular Gorum. And you can see here he's got this cool little like shelf piece that pops open. Um, I believe this is supposed to represent like his uh, like scythe in the show. I'll pull up a picture so you can see it. I um, mean, but he carries around this like polearm scythe thing, which is really cool. However, this time the color scheme changes to match more of this tan on brown, which is um, much more ideal, I think, than like the brown and like orange color. 
Um, I feel like this ends up becoming the staple and overall just I like it better. I think some people are really nostalgic over the dark brown, but for me this just, I don't know, I feel like it works better. I really dig the green on tan. Um, it's just very camouflage and it reminds me of like a very earthen color, so I like it much more. Um, Hammergorm's also got like a hand here that moves. I think this also kind of represents him like grabbing that polearm. Um, so I don't know, this hand can be a little bit annoying, but Overall, like it really adds a lot of character and style to the toy that Gorm just didn't have. And I think this, as I'm talking about it, might be my favorite Subterra Bakugan. Just because of how he looked in the show, he looked so cool. And then this attention to detail is really nice, especially for such an early generation of Bakugan. So to close Hammer Gorm, again, we just shut the feet right there. And then we push his little scythe in push his hand in along with these two little pieces right here that cover him up and then you pop the top right there so it clicks in and that is hammer gorum all right now we are moving on to nuvastroya here we have a translucent thunder wilda as part of my collection where i collected all of season two as anime accurate as possible or translucent. So we've got actually a lot to talk about here more than just Thunder Wilda. Um, so I want to go ahead and jump into it. So first off, as you can see, similar to Hammer Gorm and Gorm, the feet pop open on the bottom here in almost the same exact style. However, we do have a slightly better looking color scheme, especially for this copper color right here. I do prefer it a little better. It's just much more shiny. Um, the translucent on this also looks incredible. Got the subterra symbol there. Pop open that first and then pop out the feet. Noted. Um, so yeah, we've seen we see now that we lose that green color over a yellow. And I'll go ahead and pull up a picture of Wilda here so we can take a look at that just to compare. I like Wilda more because he flares out so much. He's got like these pieces on top right here that just make him much bigger, which I think is what Subterra Bakugan need. Um, they need to look intimidating. They need to look giant. Uh, so. Yeah, I really like that. The hands here again, nice and like bulky and big, which is good. Um, and then I really appreciate Thunderwilda's face. It's just, it's scary, which I think it, it looks like a like an earth monster, which is good. Um, so Thunderwilda here sits at 630 Gs. Uh, really nice there. And then I've got regular Wilda. So in the toy line, we never actually saw Wilda. So this is the pre-evolution to what Thunder Wilda is. So this Bakugan evolves into this Bakugan, right? We never actually saw that in the show. All we saw was this Thunder Wilda evolve into a Flare Wilda, um, which I'll pull up a picture here. This was a prototype. Um, it was never actually released, but it was meant to light up. And for some reason, we don't know why, it was just never released. So we never got a Flare Wilda. Um, but we did get its pre-evolution, which is right here. And personally, I really like it. It comes in at 515 Gs, which is a really odd number. I don't think, you know, you expect it to be such a specific number. Usually they're by 10s, not by 5s. Um, but I love this design. Um, it, it really accents the yellow, which, you know, the first season got rid of. But... It just looks so good, and it also keeps that bulk. Like, we don't have feet, which I'm fine with, but man, does it keep that bulk. And look at these hands. They're huge, which is great for Subterra Bakugan. Um, so I actually prefer this one's head more than this one. They, they both look good, but this one just looks more scary to me. Um, so I really, really like Wilda here. And it's also easy to close. All you do is just fold that in, and it's it's so easy. Um, so Wilda like that is really nice. And same with this Wilda, like, close the feet. And then it just all comes in together. It's really nice. And the translucent on these just looks incredible. So really highly recommend collecting these. Usually they go for relatively cheap. Um, so it's just good to have in a collection, I think. Wilda's cool. Up next on the list is Subdera Corridum which is Jake's Guardian Bakugan in Season 3, Gundalian Invaders. And personally for me, this is when Subterra started getting a little repetitive. Um, so Subterra Cordum, again, we have an interesting color scheme here. Like we keep the tan, but now we've got this darker brown on this orange, which I really like. And I mean, the design itself is really nice. Like it's a very like DNA 
esque pattern, which I feel like represents a lot of season three. Um, but this is where it starts getting annoying to me. We get this um, the same exact feet, like like compared to Wilda's, these are almost the same exact thing. Um, compared to Hammergorum, the feet open the same, which is. It's nice in the sense that there's some similarities, like I like that repetition, but it also starts getting old, especially when you just have multiple the same Bakugan that open the same. And and same thing here when you pop open Corridum, like he pops open very similar to Wilda, like his hands come out. Um, again, of course, a little different. Uh, he does rest at, I believe this is 500 Gs. It's a little scuffed right there. It might be a little hard to see. Um, but yeah, so overall, like he's not, he's not bad. He just, again, the, the big hands are cool, but it starts to become the same. Um, but that's not to say Cordum isn't cool because he can deploy battle gear. So let's go ahead and we have to, he's really interesting. So his hands come down, right? And I kind of have to like just close his feet in order for them to even kind of have a chance. Um, cause he doesn't like quite rest on his magnet. So I've had trouble like deciding whether I want his feet open or not because he doesn't quite lock in because um, he kind of floats above it. So it all really just depends. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and put on his battle gear. And so here is his battle gear, Rock Hammer. Now in the show it was copper. I just have the silver version. Um, I wasn't too picky when I when I bought him what, what came with them. But let's go ahead and pop that on and say, yeah, it comes out. It's really cool. Uh, so it's got like this, you know, hammer on here, like this flail spike, as well as like some kind of cool looking saw thing. Uh, so really cool. And then the G power on the back here is 160. So that's really strong. I believe this is, um, yeah, it's Japanese. It's got the magnet guard there. Um, so I don't know why it's so strong. If you were interested, um, the gold version of this has 70. The silver version is supposed to have 60. The copper is supposed to have 70 or 180. I'm not sure why mine has 160. I guess the wiki maybe just didn't get that one. Not not too sure. Um, but yeah, I really like this battle gear. It definitely makes Cordum look stronger and bigger, which is what we want. Um, unfortunately, the battle gear just doesn't it doesn't like fit on him well. It, it works. There we go. That's a little bit better. I don't know. I've always had problems with it, but uh, yeah, really, really cool, and I like it. It just adds so much to them, as with all the other Gundalian and Bakugan. Like, before the battle gear, they just look flat, and then after it's on, it looks so good. <laughs> so to close Rock Hammer, I always just, you know, return this to its place and lock that in, and then it has this little piece you got to watch out for, so make sure you close that in before, like, pushing it in. Sometimes it doesn't lock all the way. There we go. And then this little piece folds in as well, and that goes in, and that closes Rock Hammer. And then to close Cordum, of course, just shut his feet like normal, and then everything just kind of goes up and in. Uh, I always close the face piece first, and then follow that by the back end. Keep that, and then the hands lock everything else into place. And that is Subterra Cordum. <laughs> All right, up next is Subterra Boulderon, which is probably the rarest Subterra Bakugan I have and one of the more rare Bakugans that I own in my collection. Um, super hard to find. I got it from uh, Indonesia. And it didn't take too long to get here either, and I'm just really happy to have him. Unfortunately, it's not diecast, but this is Paige's Guardian Bakugan in the first arc of Mectanium Surge, and it's just really cool. It's got this G-Power wheel here. Um, I can't spin it to like show all of them. I've tried to like, you know, go and, and find each G power. The wiki here states that it has, the Subterra version has uh, 1,250 Gs. I'm not sure if that's meant to be like added up or, or what, because um, I can't like, you know, go in and, and turn them like this. I'd need something to stick in there, which I don't want to do. Um, but Boulderon's got a couple manual parts, so the feet here, and then this little horn pops out right here, and then he's also got a tail in the back, which you kind of have to leave level so that you can actually deploy the magnet. So let's go and pop him open, and his, his wheel span there, and it's at 560 Gs. And so yeah, this is Subterra Boulderon. And now one cool feature with him is you can actually manipulate his hands, so you can make them kind of stick up, or you can have them uh, stick down like this. Uh, you can also have them lock in like that. So there's a lot of myth manipulation you can do for different battle gear. Um, and you can do that on both sides. So if you want his hands down like this, you can. Otherwise, you can just uh, kind of, you know, lock them up. 
it's really cool and then they also lay flat so lots of different variation here um, his color scheme in the show is is a bit different you know I feel like the toy lost a lot of that I'll go ahead and pull up some pictures here he does look similar to Wilda in a whole lot of ways I don't know in terms of the show I'm I'm really mixed on it I just feel like Gorham and Wilda did a way better job um, but because Boulderon is just so rare um, I gotta say he's cool, right? So yeah, here's the a, a look at the back here. Again, more room for, for Baku Nano. So you got one, two, three, four different holes for Baku Nano. It's, it's pretty good. Um, I think that's almost as much as Titanium Dragonoid as well. I think Titanium has the most. Um, yeah, here's his, his symbol there. And again, like we just lost so much color. Um, like the only color we have is the silver, the tan, and then the blue eyes, which is just, you know, not as great as the other Subterras. So I do have Boulderon's Baku Nano here, which is Sling Pike. And it is the gold version, which is show accurate, and it deploys by clicking this button here. And it's at 40 Gs right there. And uh, yeah, this is supposed to go on top of Boulderon. So I'm gonna close his horn, and then this rests right on top there. And uh, yeah, it goes right there. So similar to like Cordom's Battle Gear, he's got this cool spiky ball which you can actually move and manipulate, which is a really nice feature. And I uh, I don't know, I really like it. I like displaying him with it. Um, I kind of like it up because when you do that, it just hides so much of his face. But I'll show another picture of what it looks like in the show as well. It's just supposed to lay over his body like that and sort of protect him. And then it's super easy to close. So you take it off. Got to be careful. All right. And it just kind of, you just kind of like take it like this and then just... Boom, and that's it back together. It's super, super easy. Um, for Boulderon, uh, you just close his feet like so, and then his tail in the back. Make sure you shut this so that this clicks together, all that in the back, and then his head and his tail kind of connect, so make sure you shut those together, and then his hands just roll into place. I like to keep everything kind of connected because he does like to pop out in certain ways. I just kind of mush him all together, and that is Subterra Boulderon. Last up, we have Subterra Rockstar, which was Mira's Guardian Bakugan in the second arc of Mectanium Surge. And this is honestly probably the weirdest one I've got. Um, yeah, so we do get some color back. A little bit more than Boulderon. The color scheme is still the same. It's still tan on silver on blue. But we get a little bit more blue features, especially like in this part of the feet here, which I really like. Um, I kind of wish there was something there, but you know. We, we lost a lot. So let's go and pop him open because he doesn't actually have any manual parts until you open him. So this is Rockstor. And we can go ahead and push his hands out because they need to come out. So that's one manual part. And that's honestly, like, initially it. That's all Rockstor is. He's got a tiny little face here. So he's got this little peg here to connect to Aquas Radisson, which I'm still looking for, by the way. Um, and then he forms Betacore as a Baku fusion. And I'll go ahead and pull up a picture here so that you can compare him. He is a little bit better, like he's definitely a completely new design. So he's no longer like a golem, which I really like, but more of like a bug creature, which is much better. Um, just changing it up finally from all these different golems to finally having something different, which is really nice in the show. Um, but he has got some more pieces, so in order to find his um, G power, actually, we have to like lay his feet down. And so he's got 850 Gs here, but his feet come out to help form Betacore with Aquas Radisson. So he can actually stand up and be like a walking... I, he kind of reminds me of like a bottom half of a horse or an ostrich. So yeah, he comes out for that, which is really nice and just adds so much more. I think at this point, Mectanium Surge really got... Uh, into the design and all that, which is cool. Because um, he can totally transform into a completely different Bakugan, which I just really like. I think that's awesome. In order to just put him back, you just literally fold his feet back up and, and swing him up. And it's really easy, and just make sure you get past that one part, and, I mean, you're done. Um, so, yeah, really, really cool. Again, I kind of wish Mectanium Surge did more colors, but it is what it is. Um, overall, I really like Rockstore. He, uh, he, he was a good one to add to the collection. He's unique. Um, just very strange. So to close them, we just go ahead and put the hands in like this. Now they will flip up like that, but the, the feet here will just kind of like help close them. So yeah, 
and then that just goes in and just make sure you kind of keep those down and then this little piece locks everything into place and that is Subterra Rockstore. That's gonna be it for this video, guys. Let me know which Bakugan from this video was your favorite. Who is the best Subterra Bakugan? I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one. My name is Jesse, peace out. Hello everyone, my name is Jesse, and welcome back to another Bakugan video. Today, we're gonna to be looking at all the main character Chaos Bakugan from the show. Before I get started, guys, I do wanna remind you that I buy and sell Bakugan. You can check out the links below in my description for my eBay and Mercari if you're interested. To start today's episode, we're going to be using the Garvarian card, which is my favorite gate card ever. I really love the art style on it. I think this Ghost Lady's awesome. Um, it's mainly good for Ventus and Subterra, actually, but the Chaos uh, perk for it is not too bad. Uh, so it's a good card to have in your deck if you're running, you know, Subterra, Chaos, and Ventus. But 50 to Chaos, and then, of course, players with Chaos Bakugan in their used or unused pile get 100G power to their Bakugan at this battle, which is just super nice, and uh, it'll help, you know, if you build a good deck. And so I really like this card just for that design and its usefulness. But this is what we're going to be using to open the Bakugan. Let's get into it. All right, first up on our list is Tigrera, which is Runo's guardian Bakugan in the show, and probably the first, like my first favorite Bakugan ever. I remember as a kid really liking Tigrera. Uh, that since changed after rewatching the show, but still one of my my favorites. Uh, it holds a great place in my heart. So off the bat, we've got this nice like you know tiger design with the tail and all that, which is really cool. Um, I also like how there's like sort of claws here like like legs you can tell just based off that design um really really cool and of course she's only got two manual parts which are the feet right here those pop open and then of course she place her down and she's a very simple bakugan um you know there's not a whole lot to to like closing and opening her which i like i think the simplicity of the b1 bakugan are really cool by the way this is b1 uh the b2 tigrera actually has a whole and this part of the Bakugan, I guess this is to prevent choking, but uh, yeah, she's got a hole there. So that's how you can identify the difference between the B1 and the B2 the easiest. Um, but this one has 300 Gs, as you can see right there. So really good for a, you know, B1 Bakugan. That's really awesome. Um, as you can see, I've got some pictures going right here. So the differences are just pretty much the white color. Um, and then like instead of the gold, it's yellow, but there's not too much of a difference. I think a lot of Chaos Bakugan kind of get the shaft in terms of coloring because all the background on the show were white, but we get this gray gold, which isn't bad, but when you want something sh like show accurate, you lose a lot of that. So overall, I liked her design. You know, she was a simple tiger, which is really cool. And uh, yeah, so to close her, we just got the feet here, feet shut, close her tail in the back here. So right here. And then the best part is you just have to close this piece and then those, like, I guess they're her paws or whatever, her claws, they lock in. So all you do is close them. And I like this because it upgrades in Blade Tigrera. So let's get on to her. All right, up next on the list is Chaos Blade Tigrera, of course, the evolution of Tigrera. Um, she evolves after defeating Lars Lion, gaining some power, and uh, evolves into Blade Tigrera, which I do not like in the show. I think the like monster version of Blade Tigrera is not that great. Um, you know, she starts standing on two legs, which I just don't like, and it, I just don't feel like it fits her. Um, but the ball form I love a lot more than regular Tigrera. So we've got three manual parts. The first two we open here with the feet. Go ahead and pop her open right there. And then, of course, we've got like the blade function, which is really nice, I guess. And she pops open, which is really reminiscent of how uh, Tigrera like pops open, like her paws slide out. And so the same way, you know, these like parts of the body slide out, which is really cool. And then, of course, you've also got like that hat piece, which has the hole in it for the B2. That little section right here is like kind of upgraded in Blade Tigra, which I really, really love. Uh, she's got 440 Gs right there. It's kind of hard to see in that shadow. There you go. And of course, a nice upgrade from, you know, Tigra, you know, going from 300 to 440 as an evolution. Really solid. This is the green version with the green eyes and the green teeth. There is a red-eyed version with the red teeth. I don't quite know what the difference is. I think it might just be, you know, variations or a... Um, 
just like a difference in like good and like good and like calm and angry Tigreira. Not 100% sure why they did that. Um, someone in the comments can let me know. Yeah, so Tigreira, of course, like I say, I didn't like her too much in the show. I felt like making her bipedal is a little weird. I don't know. In the show, it just, it, it was different and it was like off-putting because she goes from standing like on four legs like a tiger to all of a sudden standing up. But nonetheless, the blades are really cool. And I think the, the toy captures that very well because you've got like these hands that project out with these little like blades on them. Not quite, but still really cool. And then of course, they also capture that nice design Tugura has of like the tiger body, which is super cool. So yeah. That is Chaos Blade Tigrera, and of course you close her by shutting those pieces on the body, closing the feet, and then just like Tigrera, you have that hat part shut down, and then these two close them together. And that's how you close Chaos Blade Tigrera. And third up on our list, we're going on to New Vistroya which is Baron's Guardian Bakugan Chaos Nemes. Now I have a clear Chaos Nemes, um, part of my collection, trying to get all of New Vistroya in either translucent or as close to anime accurate as I could get. Um, this is actually the closest you can get for the translucent. You can get a clear. Because it's clear, there are no like attributes or whatever. It's attributeless, but this is the closest I could get, and it looks pretty Chaos to me, so this is what I got. And Nemes is a cool Bakugan. Um, the Chaos version here has 520 Gs, as you can see right there. And Nemesis is a cool Bakugan here, because he's tall and he's just unique. Uh, he's got this very, like, you know, proud, you know, giant stance to him, which is really cool. Kind of reminds me of Gorum, if Gorum was Chaos. And so we've got all these unique designs here that are really hard to see on the clear version. But of course we've got, like, the orange crest and then a bunch of, like, silver lining. And another piece that's really cool about, uh, Mega Nemesis here is that you can actually see his hands there. They're really hard to see. I'll try and like cover my finger with it maybe. But yeah, he's got all these details. And so what's interesting too is that in New Vistroy, these Bakugan evolved, but we actually don't get an upgrade. We don't actually see Saint Nemesis, the evolution. I'll pull up pictures. So you'll see Nemesis, of course, and then you'll see Saint Nemesis. And Saint Nemesis doesn't, we never got him. I, I don't know what the logic behind that was. I don't know why they didn't make them, but we did get the pre-evolution, which is just Nemesis. So we have Nemesis, Mega Nemesis, and then Saint Nemesis. And of course, I've got my uh, my clear Nemesis here as well. So the only difference really being is he's not tall and he's got a red crest with purple on it. But yeah, that's like, it's super similar. The, the hands are a bit different, of course. But I mean, you, we never actually see this in the TV show. We just see Mega Nemesis. It's like he's already been evolved, similar to Wilda. Um, we don't ever see Wilda. We just see Thunder Wilda. Uh, so the same thing's going on here. But it's still cool that we actually got one, I guess. It, it would make me happier if we got Saint Nemesis. Um, even though his ball form's so similar to Mega Nemesis, I still kind of want it just because we don't see this one in the show. So it's like, I don't really want it. Um, but... I got it just to complete the set a little bit, and it's really easy to close, too. You just got to get the head in there just right, and then everything just locks in. And so Nemesis here is also super easy to, uh, you know, close. So you just close his head, and then you got to lock, lock that in. And then, of course, you do that, so I just catch his hands right there, and then that locks into place, and that is Chaos Mega Nemesis. Up next, we have Fabia's Guardian Bakugan Aranaut, and as you can see, Chaos here is slowly starting to upgrade. So we've gotten rid of that gold on gray, and now we've got gray on yellow, which is, in my opinion, a bit better because it looks a bit more anime accurate, um, but still nonetheless not perfect. Aranaut here has uh, two manual parts, which are his feet right here as you open him, and they also like are bendable, kind of like Cross Dragonoid, which is very cool. The feet here are bendable. And so we'll pop him open because he's got a couple more things going on. But this is Aranaut. And then he's also got hands that are actually behind him right here. Go and pop those guys down. So manual parts. He's at 520 Gs. So pretty strong. Um, you know, nothing crazy, but it's a good balance. Nice, nice, solid, solid, even, even Bakugan. Um, and then, yeah, he's got a tail here, which actually clicks up and down. So right there and this of course is the whole battle gear which we'll get to in a second but this is Aranaut which is Fabia's guardian Bakugan. So I'll start some pictures up right here so you can take a look while I get the battle crusher battle gear ready. Um, 
you know, I don't have too much to say about Aranat. He was cool. He had some some good um, like values and personality. He reminded me a lot of Percival. But overall, I don't think he had anything crazy going on. Still very cool, though. And then here is Battle Crusher, so I'll go ahead and deploy that. Of course, uh, Gundalian Invaders introduced Battle Gear, and this is Battle Crusher, Aranat's Battle Gear, which I think really completes him. It's really cool, and it kind of wraps around his body like a, like a, it's almost like a chain of light, but it was really it's really cool. I think in the show, this is one of the un more unique Battle Gear. It's much better than Gigarth, that's for sure, and even... Even better than Hawk Tour stuff, I think. It's just, it fits Aranaut very well. Um, and then another fun fact is, I didn't know this, but Gundalian Invader Bakugan don't evolve. So if you think about it, like someone in the comments mentioned this to me, only Bakugan from New Vestroia evolve. Nethian and Gundalian Bakugan don't, which kind of shocked me. Um, but yeah, before I forget, this has 200 Gs, so, you know, it's the battle gear it adds on, so... Um, the, what's that, 520 plus 200, it'd be 720, so when you get the battle gear on there, gives them some extra strength, which is really nice, and, uh, yeah, that's Arnot, and, um, he's definitely up there on my favorite of the Chaos Bakugan. So, to close Battle Crusher, it's actually not too, too bad, you just lock in these pieces, it's similar to, um, Scorpion, the, the trap Bakugan, and these lock in on the sides, and then make sure you get this little, like, laser probe thing, I don't even know what it is, and lock that in, and then this just clicks down, and so just like that, that is the Battle Crusher locked up. Make sure you get his hands up, that's the first part, so all the manual parts need to go in. Hands and feet need to get locked up, and then he's pretty simple after that, just make sure his head clicks down, and then his hands lock in place. And that is Chaos Aronaut. All right, now we're moving on to Season 4, Mectanium Surge. This is Arc 1, Wolf Furio, which is probably my favorite Chaos Bakugan. I, I think it is. I think Wolf Furio is probably my favorite, and I'll, I got a bunch of reasons why. But, um, yeah, so first off, uh, we've got an actual die-cast one. So this is actually the, like the heavy metal die-cast one. It's not like the plastic one. Uh, so that's a big start, and I, I think I have to talk about this by opening it, so let's pop him open, okay, and then of course he's got feet that come down right there, and that is all the manual parts, so just the crest and the feet, the, um, the G power here is very difficult to see, but it's on the chest right there, it's at 830 Gs, and I'm gonna go and put up some pictures while I talk about Wolf Furio, and so... Um, of course, as you're seeing by the pictures right now, we've lost a lot of different color that Wolfurio has. You know, we've got some yellows and some really nice blues that the Mectanium Surge design for the toys just completely got away with, which kind of sucks. The Chaos color, like gray on the silver, isn't bad looking, um, but we did unfortunately lose that, which does suck. I do like Wolfurio. I liked his voice actor for the dub for the English version, and I liked his like knight kind of status, which was really, really cool. And then just his character with Boulderon, them kind of getting in together, was really nice, and it had a good little story there. Um, the one thing I do lack on this, unfortunately, is the Lanzado Baku Nano. Um, in the Japanese, it's referred to as Spear Aegis, but it's Lanzado here. Um, I can't find it. It's, I've, apparently, it's very hard to find. I guess it was like an, a European exclusive, and it's like the last piece I really need to complete my official collection is I really need that Lanzado Baku Nano. I can't get it. I've looked everywhere. I've been asking. And I'm sure a lot of you guys know this based off my social media posts. I can't find it. And I'm I'm partly just about to throw in the towel and just pray it shows up one day because I'm getting tired of looking. It's been, it's almost been four, four months, maybe going on five months now. And I just, I'm about to throw in the towel. Um, but yeah, I really need that Lanzado Baku Nano. It's basically a shield and spear. I'll pull up pictures so you can take a look. But it's really solid, and it's a really cool back of Nano. I don't know why they're so hard to find. But yeah, that's the only part I'm missing off of Wolfurio. Otherwise, my set is complete. Um, so just looking for that. And that's pretty much my rant there. But to close Wolfurio, we're going to firstly shut the feet. So we're going to fold those guys back up into the body and shut this little, like, crest horn on his head. And then the easiest way I find to do this is to shut his head and then lock his body down. And then we're going to kind of just fold up the hands into the body. And they do actually require some pressure to go in there from what I've gathered. You can kind of like do it this way. 
but eventually they will go in. There you go. And that is Chaos Wolfurio. Last on our list is Chaos Reptac, which is Gunz's guardian Bakugan from the second arc of Mectanium Surge. Reptac is an interesting one. Um, this is the Baku Eclipse version. I'll get into why in just a second. Uh, but very interesting Bakugan with a very interesting history, especially really related to Guns and Wise Man and that whole story uh, with Reptac trying to find his, you know, his partner in the show. Uh, unique little story there, and actually probably one of the okay parts of Arc 2, because a lot of Arc 2 is not that great. Um, but uh, yeah, so Reptac is a Sky Raider Bakugan, so we're going to go ahead and do a nice roll. I'm actually going to throw it all the way back here and see if I can do a really sick land, because Reptac deserves it. Um, so you can see the Sky Raider ability in its full form. So if you don't know what a Sky Raider is, they basically jump when they hit the card. So let's see if I can do this first try. Yep. Reptac does not roll. Um... Ooh, okay, <laughs> bring that back. All right, so now that we have Reptac open, we've got to do a couple things. So just his feet here, or his little claws, I guess they are. Uh, so claws, and then he's got a little piece of a hook back there, which pops open. And that's essentially Reptac. Um, there's not a whole lot to him. Mine's uh, G Power is still covered, but I believe it's 1,020. I've done another video on this uh, with the, the numbers pulled up. Believe it's 1,020. If not, I'll fact check it and put it on the screen there, but it, I'm pretty sure it's 1,020, which is probably one of the strongest Bakugan with like the solid printed G Power out there. I think there's a couple more that are either equal to or a bit stronger. As you can see here, I'm gonna start pulling up pictures of Reptac and what he looks like. So as you can see here, as a Chaos Bakugan, he's mostly white with like yellow and orange on him. Um, but as you can see here, this one is mostly black and like a very dark gray. That's because this is the Baku Eclipse version, the Chaos version, because from what I understand, the actual physical normal Chaos version doesn't necessarily, it, I guess it exists, we don't know if it's a prototype or how many, the only picture online of this guy being like a normal, almost like a white chaos color is one picture next to a ruler showing it. Um, otherwise it doesn't, we don't see it anywhere. There are no pictures of it besides that one picture. So I believe that's a prototype or a very well custom made. I don't know, but I got the next best thing, which is the one that's actually legit uh, to get right now, as far as I'm aware, is the Baku Eclipse version. So I did what I could, um, and as you can see there, there's the Chaos uh, little star, which is what I mainly got it for because everyone was like, oh, just buy like a Pyrus one and paint it, or buy like the um, such and such and just paint it. And I'm like, no, I can't do that to myself. It has to be Chaos. I can't do it any other way. So I did what I could. Um, and of course, you know, Reptac can connect to uh, Pyrus Fusion Drago to reform an Arrow Blitz, which is the gimmick the Sky Raiders had, is they could fuse together to create themselves, like, I guess, get stronger, which is really cool. And um, I'll probably do, like, a very big video on the fusions and the Baku Sky Raider combinations eventually, but um, Reptac is one of those, and uh, pretty nice. I really like him as a base. He's actually solid and can hold up. Drago, like some of the other ones can't. They just have very flimsy legs. Uh, this one, you actually, just to put him into that form, you lock his legs, lock this down, and then he just kind of spreads out and stands. And it actually holds, which is really, really nice. Um, but I'm gonna pop his feet out again. Yeah, the feet actually roll out pretty smooth. Um, but yeah, so Reptac is up there. Maybe not my favorite. Um, I probably like Nemesis a little more than him, but he's still up there. And so that makes him very special. He was very difficult to get. It took months for him to get to my house after I bought him. There was all kinds of complications, which of course you can see. Um, I'll put videos related to all my Chaos Bakugan in the description. You can check out the RepTech video if you want to hear more about that story. Um, but let's go ahead and close them. So the first thing I do is lock the feet in. These are spring-loaded, so they are difficult. And then I just make sure the uh, claws here are sealed up and then those fold in together and they do sometimes like to kick the feet out So probably do the feet last <laughs> um, The spike little piece closes in and rolls together and then we'll go ahead and lock the feet in Maybe a bit better that way. There we go. And that is Chaos Reptac. All right guys, and that's gonna be the end of this video I want to know who is your favorite Chaos Bakugan and with that I'll see you in the next video. My name is Jesse. 
Peace out. Hello everyone, my name is Jesse and welcome back to another Bakugan video. Today we're going to be taking a look at all of the, like, I guess good Darkest Bakugan. I made a separate video covering all the evil Bakugan, so if you see some that you're thinking are Darkest and are not here, they're in the evil uh, section of that, so I'll leave a link to that as well as an icon right there at the top. So you can check out uh, Hydranoid and Derak and all of them. Um, but this is going to be covering, I guess, the Darkest good side in a sense. Um, I made a post recently saying that I thought the series was complete, I felt it was complete, um, but you guys said no, and you don't care about my feelings. So here we are covering the last set of them. As you can see, there's not many. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, just six, which I guess is similar to some of the Subterra or Chaos. So I was apprehensive on the video, but you guys very clearly wanted it. So here I am making it. This is for you guys. So... <laughs> Here we go. Before the video begins, I do want to let you know I do buy and sell Bakugan. You can check out my eBay and Mercari links down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. I post Bakugan content weekly, if not two or three times a week. So make sure you turn on the bell notification as well to stay tuned for updates. For today's video, we're going to be using this Percival Field card, which says a Percival Bakugan gets 100 GD power for each ability card played by its owner during battle, so a pretty good one here, especially if you're playing Percival. I've seen a lot of pretty impressive Percival decks, so he seems to be a good one to uh, brawl with, but 150 to Darkus, 200 to Aquas, and even 140 to Pyrus, so pretty good for any attribute of Percival, but we're going to be using this to start the video. All right, and first up on the list is Darkest Percival. This is a translucent one, part of my translucent set, where I tried to collect all of New Vestroia as either uh, translucent or as close to anime accurate as I could get. This one just happens to be translucent. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at the different colors here. So, of course, we've moved on from Season 1 at all. You know, Hydronoid covers that darkest area there. Um, but we've moved on to a new color scheme, which is yellow in this. So we've got a nice, like, black. This is gray, but if it was solid, it'd be black on purple on yellow, which is really nice. And not too much going on pattern-wise here. There's nothing super crazy, but you can see, like, Percival's, like, horns there and all that, which are really nice. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and pop them open. Percival has two manual parts, which are just the feet here, so one and two. And we'll go ahead and pop them open, so... Boom. And as you can see here, he's pretty, pretty cool looking. I mean, he's got all these different colors going on. And then, of course, we've got like his, these aren't actually heads. They're like gauntlets on him. So I'll show, I'll pull up pictures here as I kind of talk about him. But this is Ace Grit's Guardian Bakugan from Season 2. And we first see him fighting Neo Dragonoid just to see if they can uh, get in uh, with the resistance during the, the New Vestroia era. In terms of like, you know, variations. Percival's got a lot. He's got Cyclone Percival, Alpha Percival, Midnight Percival, and then we'll get into Night Percival here in a little bit. But you've also got a pretty cool Vortex Percival that spins. So as Neo had his counterpart that spun, I don't have this one because this one's translucent, but there was one that spins, which is really cool as well. It was called Vortex Percival, and it really matches the, uh, the way the show portrays it as well. And mine right here has 600 G's. It's going to be kind of hard to see. I'm covering up my finger. There you go. So yeah, 600 G's and just overall really solid Bakugan. I really like how Percival, like, I like his personality a lot. He's very cool, like, you know, very knight-like. He reminds me a lot of Wolfurio, but like almost a better version in a sense. We do actually get a pretty cool pattern here when it opens. Almost like bat-like, which is really nice. Yeah, that's actually pretty sick. I do like that a lot now that I'm looking at it. <laughs> but yeah, Percival in the show was super cool. And uh, definitely like a good, almost like a good counterpart to Neo Dragonoid. Because New Vestoria marks the first time we actually see good Darkest Bakugan. Which is essentially the whole reason I'm making this video. But just being able to be like, yo, like we've got good Darkest. And there's actually some Darkest that are good. Um, really sets the stage for like the rest of the seasons as we go on and we'll I'll get into that a little bit more as I go But Percival here is very easy to close. So we just shut the feet up right there um, And then it's just top down so head goes down then wings close and then these like I guess these are like side wings as well or something these close as well and uh, Yeah, that's pretty much 
pretty much it. All right, now on to Darkest Night Percival. This is probably one of the rarer Bakugan I own. This is a translucent one, which can go for quite a lot of money, and there's also quite a lot of people looking for this Bakugan. And so I was pretty fortunate to get one. Um, and of course you can see here, he looks really, really good. Both, even the, the solid colored version of this looks really good. But this is a mega upgrade from Percival, in my opinion. Now, the color scheme isn't great compared to the show. Like, we have a lot of this silver here, which the show's version does not have. But, I mean, it just it looks incredible either way. The shininess to it makes me happy. And he is a Vortex, so we should get a pretty decent spin when we drop him. Let's see. All right, kind of good, kind of good. Um, and Percival here has a lot of manual parts. So, first off, the feet need to pop open, like so. All right. Feet, and then in the back there's this little tail which some people like to use completely propped up like so I kind of like to have mine a little bit flatter it just it just feels better to me uh, he's on the magnet and then so with all Percival like they've always got these little horns and they don't really pop out that much like it's very subtle but you can do that if you want and then he's also got arms so these arms come out right here as well and so now you've kind of got the full effect which is a lot harder to get than you think because it's got so many pieces as you can see mine still got the g power covered i believe it is 540 g's this is a japanese exclusive bakugan so they tend to be a little bit weaker over on the other side of the ocean um so yeah but i mean he's so awesome let me go ahead and pull him over here while i talk about him so compared to the show we have some different colors of course you know the feet and like the little like wing pieces are black in the show but here we've got them silver um, but otherwise, everything's pretty much as accurate as you can get it. Uh, Knight Percival evolves from getting the power from the Guardian Bakugan, as we saw in the, the first season as well. They come back for the second season and, you know, evolve all of the Brawler's Bakugan. And we get Knight Percival, who is a really, really sick upgrade. Like, he's really cool. And the, just the fact that he's Vortex, too, is really awesome. I like that spinning mechanic. Even though it's not useful in battling, it's just a really cool mechanic to have. And really just completes his, um, just completes his character, I think. And, like, even his, his, like, actual monster form. Like, he's got this shield and this, like, dark saber. It's so cool. I really like it. Um, and just his whole attitude and stuff. Like, Percival was super strong and like one of my favorite characters in new Vistoria. and honestly this is one of my favorite bakugan overall like the design on it is peak peak bakugan like new Vistoria did it really well they upgraded from season one where season one was lacking and they just they did an amazing job and so let's go ahead and close this percival i don't like to touch this one too much because he's so rare and he is actually kind of flimsy like he's not like crazy bad but i don't like all these small pieces so Let's go ahead and close the feet here. So feet close and we'll close this tail like so. And then this is the best way I've found to do it. So we flip these pieces back right here. So pieces go back. These gauntlet pieces go in. Well, let's go ahead and close these hand pieces first. Then the gauntlet pieces go in. And then we close the head. And then we shut these wing pieces. And it's kind of like all all at once and I just I just kind of mush him because he does like to pop open yeah yep see he's trying <laughs> I can't ever really keep him closed you gonna stay closed Percival no he really likes the audience I guess oh okay let's try this one more time are we good are you gonna cooperate okay and that was how you close night Percival <laughs> Up next, we have Ren Crawler's Guardian Bakugan Darkest Line Hall. And Line Hall is an interesting one because he's very reminiscent of Percival, but not quite. Uh, there is some some differences. And his story is pretty interesting because he was like possessed by some forbidden power, which made him like super like evil in a sense. Uh, I'm doing that with air quotes. But um, yeah, I mean, Gundalian Invaders, we get this new color scheme, which is mostly dark and green, which I actually prefer a lot. It kind of backs up the DNA codes right here, like you see. Um, it really just strengthens those, I think, which is really cool. It just makes them more uh, kind of, I don't know, it gives it more of an evil feel, but it's not quite 
uh, the same as that purple, which, I don't know, it's, it does go with me. I like it a lot. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's go ahead and pop open Line Halt. So Line Halt here has a couple manual parts. First off, the feet. Let's go ahead and pop them open. And then as you can see, uh, we've got some horns going on. So we got to, usually I just bend his head down and then pop the horns out because there's two green ones. You got two green ones right here. They're pretty hard to get out. And then you've got this back horn, which goes this way. And then he's also got these hands that kind of can move in and out and all that. But I like to keep them in just because it's easier to close. And so let's go ahead and put him on display here. Get some pictures going as well. And if you watch the show, you'll learn that like Ren and Lineholt kind of have a history together, kind of growing up together in Gundalia. So they've been partners for quite a long time. And uh, uh, Ren tries to kind of trick the brawlers at the very beginning, uh, infiltrating uh, Bakugan inner space and all that with Lineholt. And then eventually, as time goes on through the show, Lineholt and Ren leave the 12 orders and join the Bakugan battle brawlers. So Lionel's personality kind of changes there. And then as you saw from the pictures, the color schemes are actually pretty spot on. The only difference is we're missing that yellow horn and then the red under the wings right there. But otherwise, I mean, he's he's pretty much exactly how you expect him to be. Um, he, again, looks a lot like Knight Percival um, with the horns and the wings spread out like that. But he is pretty much a separate Bakugan in my opinion. He does have a lot of differences, especially with his attitude. So that does make up for it. Um, he also has his Boomix gear, which is his battle gear. So we just released that right there. I have the copper version in the show. I believe they use the silver one. Um, but it's also got this kickstand here, which is nice and actually kind of easy to miss. It's in a very good spot to, to hide, but we'll kick that out in a second. But battle gear goes on and it will deploy. So like that and then you kind of got to tuck it over the wing some there and then the kickstand will pop out and boom so 160 g's on that and then i believe my line hold has let's see where does it say oh yeah it's scuffed i think it's i think it's 560 it, it could also be 680 <laughs> i don't know it it doesn't really it's so scuffed, and I don't know if the wiki actually says. I'll, I can double check. Yeah, the so the wiki only really states the American G power. I'm pretty sure this is a Japanese one, but um, it it's something with an 80 in it. It's probably 580. Uh, but this is Lionheart with Boomix, and Boomix looks incredible on him. Like, really, really, really good. Um, I'm a huge fan of this as a battle gear. It really actually, like, Lionholt is one of the very few Bakugan that can look good and not flat without his battle gear. But when he does put it on, it definitely makes him look better. And I'll go ahead and put up some pictures there um, just so you can see really quickly. But the Boomix gear is, is really cool. It's almost like a, it's just a giant cannon, really. Um, in the show, it looks good as well. It's it's just an overall really good piece to have, I think. And it completes Lionholt. Like, if you like Lionholt... It's pretty sick, and I'm pretty sure you see it in, like, the first episode or so. So, I mean, that's just, you know, kind of a plus. Uh, but to close Boomix, all we do is flip this kickstand up, and then I like to take this and flip that back, and then these pieces all close individually, and then you just hold... I always hold these down because this will lock it in. So I hold these... Oh, they're staying. Okay. Hold this down, and then this goes in, and boom. That's how you close Boomix. And then line halt here. We're going to close the feet and then the wings, make sure you pop those up and then the horns go down right there and then these go in and then head closes and then you kind of just have to make sure everything gets tucked in and then boom, that's easy. Uh, it's not too bad. It might take you a couple tries if you're just getting them, but that is how you close Darkest Wine. Alright, up next we have Darkest Infinity Helios. We're finally on to Mectanium Surge Arc 1. I've done quite an extensive review on this Bakugan. I've done an extensive review on all the Helios, but uh, nonetheless he is a good Darkest Bakugan, so he is in this video. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at him real quick. So we've got uh, most of the, the correct colors from Mectanium Surge, except this should be a green. Um, and you'll see pictures of that here in a second after I pop him open. 
Uh, we've also got this G power wheel here. So the great thing about Infinity Helios, at least it's never really mentioned in the TV show, but in the game uh, you can spin. So there's an arrow here and you can actually spin the G power to pick whichever one you want. So I had mine set on the strongest, but there's, you know, 500, 560, 620, uh, 680, 380, 440 and then back to 500 so you have a lot of options there this one's also not the die cast version it's just a plastic one um but i believe the american versions were die cast which is pretty cool and so let's go ahead and pop helios open so boom and then you got to flip his head out here so that's one manual part that normally doesn't flip and then his feet come out like this so the feet pop and then they also have more feet here and then i always just place them on the ground and flatten them out but otherwise, he is, uh, that's it. That's all Helios is. He's a, a little bit more complicated than the other evolutions, but still really cool. And I think it's interesting in the show, I've talked about this before, but like he goes from Pyrus to Darkest, which is significant. And he says something along the lines of like, you know, can a Bakugan change or whatever like that, which is pretty cool. Because he just, in order to get stronger, he went to Darkest, which is interesting and then of course you've also got mutant helios here which in the show uh they can combine and form different mutants i've done extensive reviews on mutant helios and the other mutants but this is a custom painted one i have in case you were curious um right here so pretty awesome um but yeah they do mutate and stuff so i figured i'd throw him in there just for a quick mention but let's go ahead and talk about him so uh, as you can see here they're relatively similar in terms of like imaging but yeah he is totally the same back gone besides from that green and then of course his spinning wheel like you see the spinning wheel up there but it's not exactly like g power or anything it's just kind of there the the amount of power this back has like i've said it before in a video but if drago didn't have his like you know infinity core or like just plot armor this would be the strongest back in the game hands down helios would be it um, and I'll, I'll hold myself to that like that. He is the strongest Bakugan. And so here is Helios's Baku Nano, which is Boomplode, and it pops open just like this. There's a little tab and you pop that and then boom, it's completely open. It's got 80 G's right there, which is the anime accurate, like silver version of it. Um, and there's it's very different from the one that's in the show. Um, but the way I put it on is like this. So Helios has a bunch of different like holes for Nano. There's one there on the tail and then two on both arms. So he's got a lot. I've been putting mine on like this on the back. I'm not sure how accurate that is because there's not really a real answer, but this is how I've seen most people do it. And I'll go ahead and pull up pictures here just so you can take a look um, at the differences. Obviously the one in the show is incredible. I think it's one of the best looking Baku Nano we have, especially when it's on Helios. It looks like a giant like, you know, cannon. Like, there's a ton of different stuff on it. Yeah, you know, there's a ton of different guns on it. There's, like, five guns, and then there's the one on the top. So I guess if you can kind of imagine this is two, and this is two, and this is the one on top, maybe you can kind of, like, I don't know. It, it's iffy, but it's close enough. Um, but, yeah, Helios just super awesome. Love this Bakugan, especially just in the show. He was incredible. And so to close the Nano, I shut this and then it just wraps all the way around and closes together. Very easy. Helios, on the other hand, gets a little complicated. So I shut the feet and then I fold those up. And then the head and everything is just complicated. You have to fiddle with it. So the head rolls back, okay, and then fold all that in. So the head goes in and then the arms go up. And then I, it's just your... Yeah, I don't know. There's not a great way to do it, but then I just kind of just shut everything as much as I can and eventually it will all go into place. It's just got to be positioned just right. Like that tail and stuff will catch the handle catch and then eventually if you just play with it enough, you'll get it to close. And that is Darkest Infinity Helios. <laughs> Up next is Darkest Skytress, and honestly, for Mectanium Search Act 2, like Part 2, I don't have a whole lot to say about these, but we still have to cover them, so as you can see here, pretty similar to the ones in the show, uh, at least color-wise, there's actually not a whole lot going on. I do like this dull gray, though, it is actually nice looking. The Bakugan, these feel really high quality, which is something I didn't expect. They actually feel pretty, pretty, like, good in my hand. 
Um, but yeah, like I said, not a whole lot going on. Uh, let's go ahead and pop them open because there are a ton of manual parts. They are, these are Sky Raiders, so they are going to like bounce up into the sky. Oh, he actually didn't jump. Oh, hang on. Oh, there we go. Okay, really weird. I don't know why he didn't jump, but uh, yeah, here we go. So Skytris has obviously a whole slew of manual parts, um, and then even more just to connect to Magma Fury. Um, but we're going to start with the tail here, so these tail pieces pop out. And then most of the other stuff is just in the wings. So we've got a little piece here that pops out, and then this wing comes out, and then same on the other side here. And that is most of Skytris. As you can see there, 930 Gs. Very strong back of the gun. Um, the head can like move like this. Like if you want it to go down and stuff, uh, you have that. Um, but otherwise, like that's that's pretty much Skytris, and I'll go ahead and pull up pictures here so you can see some similarities. But like honestly, the colors are spot on for the most part. You've got those yellow dots. You're missing a little bit of silver. Like there could be silver right here and there, but otherwise, just the same. Um, and then Skytris in the show, man, he looked. Let's just be honest, he looked ugly. Like this dude, like I don't even know what they're trying to get at. This guy is freaky. Um, <laughs> and like when he came into the show, I was like, whoa, what the heck is that? But uh, they train, so Oberth and Skytris, I'm speaking about them as if they're both together. Um, they were Jakor's apprentices, and so they got to, like, you got to see them train. And, like, the only really significant thing they did in the show was infiltrate Rise, Wise Man's, like, cave and get some info on on that. And that's that's honestly it. All right, and so to close Skytris, um, it's actually kind of complicated, so Sky Raiders like to fight when you're trying to close them. So close up all the different manual bits, so all the wing pieces, and then I always close the tail like that, and then the head goes back, and then I just shut the feet and then close the wings on both sides, and that usually keeps them together. And that's how you close Darkest Skytris. And last on the list, we have Darkest Orbium, which is a little bit better than Skytris, but not uh, all that much more significant in any way, I don't think. Um, this one definitely has a lot more manual parts. So as you can see here, we've got a very similar color pattern. Again, feels really good in the hands. Um, you know, pretty solid color scheme. Very different. Interesting how they do like the dark gray instead of like the uh, silver like here on Helios, like the color difference in the silver is super interesting how they did that. I don't know why, because the color scheme rolls over, but let's go ahead and open Orbium because he's got a lot of manual parts to make him look how he does. So let's go ahead and pop him open again. He's a Sky Raider. Oh, and he didn't jump, he didn't jump either. Oh, there we go. Okay. And so tons of different parts here. So first we've got the like ear pieces here that come up. So we've got that. And then we've got tail back here which pops open tail rolls out like this so we've got that and then this is where the legs come in so they're both the same on each side but they pop out like so on each side and you got to fiddle with them a little bit all these different pieces that just come up so these come up and then there's uh, these I think these are really feet like they they resemble feet they don't look like it but they are and then these roll out if you can get them. They're really tiny. Last thing you really got to do is lock the feet back and then just make sure these are lowered because they act as back feet and then position them and then boom. Sort of like this. It's actually not too bad and it does make it look a lot better than having them like lay flat. This one here has got 910 Gs, so really strong. Not quite as strong as Skytris, though, but still really powerful. And, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and pull up some pictures as to what he looks like. Um, again, very similar. We did lose a little bit of the yellow, especially, like, on the chest here. Uh, it's lacking there. But otherwise, like, again, same Bakugan, really. Like, same color scheme, just losing small bits of um, silver. And then, of course, some of the feet don't look the same. But otherwise, like... He's the same Bakugan, which is, you know, pretty good. I think Mectanium Surge, like I say, really did a good job capturing very good similarities. Um, this one I like a little bit better than Skytris. Orbium is a bit less freaky than Skytris, but nonetheless, like, again, I don't know what they were doing with these guys. Like, the color palette and the designs were not great. That's about all I really have to say about them. Like I said, you know, they the only significant thing they really did was infiltrate Wise Man's Cave, and that's... 
that's about it besides combined with Magma Fury, but I don't know. I didn't really think that was all that incredible. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so to close Orbium, we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to close the horns here like so. Okay, and then all these different leg pieces need to go back. So all these need to go in. All these need to go up and in. And then the tail flips back, locks in, head locks in. And I always close the feet first and then lock these back into place. And boom. And that is how you close Darkus Orbium. And guys, that's going to be the end of this video. I want to know, who is your favorite Darkus Bakugan? Uh, I think for me, it's definitely Knight Percival, but uh, I'd like to hear what you guys think. Who is your favorite? And with that, that'll be the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, feel free to leave a like, drop a comment, and of course, subscribe for more awesome content. My name is Jesse, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.